You know, it's cold in here. It's cold in here. It's cold. That's good. It worked. It's cold. It's good. So Mark Riley is now the king of the castle because he remembered to put the air conditioner on this morning. It's cold. Yeah, welcome. It sounds nice. It doesn't smell like gross sweat. like a granola bar. I might have. Thanks. Today was a last night, man. I I love this. I love this kid. This two-year-old kid. The worst fucking sleeper in the world. Oh, uh, no. It's the worst. Yeah, so, it's, I was up three hours with this fucking kid last night. What do you do? So it's like the problem. Threw up granola all over him. I know. But no, the problem is that they now, what was happening for two years is that the, the kid was in the room with my wife and I. Right. He moved, and now we, now we just stuck her in the room with the eight-year-old. Right. right? Eight-year-old needs to go to bed. I needs to go to school. So right. we don't want to keep her up all night. So right. we, she goes to sleep. Eight-year-old then goes into the bed. But then she starts screaming and crying at night, so I got to go in there and I got to try to calm her down. Mm. And it's like normally we just let her cry it out, right? But she's gonna keep the eight-year-old right, up, and then the right, eight-year-old right, right, is right. gonna be an asshole for mm-hmm. the rest of the day because she didn't have enough sleep. So mm-hmm. it's like you got to sacrifice. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oof. And I had to wake up this morning, get on to do radio, and so I ate a protein bar and an apple, Darina. That was my. Uh, although I haven't eaten the apple yet, and the apple jumped out of the fucking car and said, "Hey, I'm gonna land on the street where where homeless people take poops." <laughs> oh, so yeah, you picked it up and ate it, right? It's, I'm gonna wash it. You should give it to the homeless guy uh, that threw the banana. Yeah. I saw him today. <laughs> there Did you go. Yeah. It hasn't fallen on the th- floor yet. Well, on the floor yet. But I saw him just today. Throw the apple. I was wondering, if it, and he had the same sign. He had the food sign today, but he didn't throw anything today. Well, I so <laughs> the same thing happened to me this morning, not with the banana and everything, but there was a girl. Uh, you ate a poop apple. Yeah, I ate a poop apple. It was yeah. fantastic. So, uh, I don't see a poop apple. Piece of <laughs> I'll see a poop apple. <laughs> um, I, a girl was walking <laughs> through the lanes, and she had a sign that she said, "I'm really hungry," so I just gave her my lunch. I gave her right. like a yogurt and avocado and whatever. And then she's a professional businesswoman. Yeah, and then she walked away, and then she looked at my window, and she like gave me a thumbs up. I was like, "All right, oh, we'll leave nice. this matter." Yeah. And then I see her open the yogurt and just, <laughs> and I was like, "All right, but that's one it. way to eat it." Well, yeah. she ate it. At least. She this, ate guy ch- this guy huh. chucked the, the, the food. So, <laughs> uh, anyway. well, I'm happy you ate a poop apple just so you wouldn't didn't be hangry. Yet. Didn't eat it yet. So you didn't, I ate but the protein, you protein bar. bar. Okay. The protein bar. Okay, so we've been dogs. We've been dog sitting for a buddy, and they've got a French bulldog. I thought you were saying we we've been dogs for a while. Yeah, yeah. Dog sitting, uh, my friend's my friend's dog. It's a little French bulldog. His name is Bubba, Hello, and Bubba. Bubba sounds just like the sound that you made from Taz. From Taz, yeah, because yeah. they can't breathe. Yeah, because they can't breathe. <laughs> it's the best. I take him yeah. to walk for and all of like ten snore. steps. Yeah. He goes to the bathroom and he's like, "Let's go back inside," because he just hates being out of breath. Know. And then at night he snores. <laughs> and it is so loud that we have to like oh, yeah. put him in another room. Mm-hmm. I Amanda woke time. up in the middle of night. She's like. God! <laughs> Why do you think they look so depressed, I the know. French bulldogs and the pugs? It's like, have you seen that video? They have a of, of, smile. No, but they're so sad because they can't breathe because they don't have a snout. So, ha- so there's sad. that dog. Used to it. No, if you ha- see know. that video of the dog, of the French bulldog watching or listening to Adele, mm, no. and he looks so <laughs> depressed and suicidal. No. I no. highly recommend. Yeah, just I looking for treats. They're just looking for treats. They just want food. That's true. We have a, we have a good show here today. Uh, returning to the show is Jai Courtney. We're going to be talking to him about his brand new uh, film, Semperfy. Yeah. So we'll be. Semperfy? Yeah, Semperfy? we're going to talk. Uh, Semperfy. Ikla. Uh-huh. It's weird because it, it would be pronounced Semper Fidelis, mm-hmm. but the Marines say it's Semperfy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Semperfy or die. I, I just was, read stuff in Spanish. I was mm-hmm. upset that you weren't in New York. I'll I t- was that too. I'll tell you why because we did. A, I I did a roast con pollo on stage. Are you serious? You, you just sang it? Did you did, shake well, did, it? Yeah, I did. Well, I did a whole bit out of it. Oh, but I, but so you, I, can, you just got to do it for me at some point. No, you can come watch the next show. Fine. When is that? Sunday, S- Saturday. S- oh, you're. I'm not here. coming on that Saturday. I'm, no, no, no. I'm talking about the stand up. I'm going to do that probably. Maybe if we do Orlando, I'll do oh, another oh, show. Oh, oh, we're, oh. we're looking into oh, doing a uh, November Orlando. comedy show. Don't want. We're looking at putting on a November stand-up comedy show. Oh, so nice. having nice. you and Ken right on. be the hosts, and Mark, myself, Brett, and Kate Mulligan, and maybe Jay Ooh. Washington or somebody. And nice. I will go to that. That um, sounds great because it's here. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna. I mean, we're gonna try. We're and trying to get. Mark's looking into. Uh, I, my first choice for this particular. I'm not gonna talk about it, but we have we have some theaters that we're looking into to getting for November because we're not doing a showdown. Live in November, so we figured maybe put on a stand-up yeah. show. So it'd be me and, and Mark. That'd be Mark great. and I and Ken are going to DC in November. I think like the okay. second weekend in December. Well, we'll do it when November you guys are in DC, because that would be awkward then. Yeah, it wouldn't work. <laughs> it wouldn't work yeah, yeah, unless we did holograms. Yes. 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 No, I was sad. I was sad. I missed you guys yeah. when everybody was in New York yeah, and it was watching us. Yeah. It was and fun. I also, I mean, I mostly missed the pizza, but I did miss yeah. you guys too. I, I was also listening to the Cure though, so it was fun. So you were fine. Oh yeah, how was that then? Amazing. So good. In fact, if you guys want to check out my Pasadena daydream. 
festival blog. It was just uh, it just went up today on the Super Dark House Look channel. You, you little promoting yeah. rat. Yeah. Like Super it. Dark House channel. That yeah. sounds like my right up my alley. Yeah. yeah. It's all about space, so yeah. you would love it. Oh. Speaking of being up his alley, what's the uh, and I'm not talking about the proctologist. What about oh, what about bang. the uh, the Halloween Horror Nights? What do we got going uh, on? We are trying to figure out what date we're going to do out of the two that we yeah. suggested. They're just checking on their events people. They better so. check on that shit. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But gonna, it's not, it's not for what? It's like a couple weeks. Are free food over there too or no? <laughs> do you want me to ask? Yeah. <laughs> uh, talk about free food. I mean, I'll ask them if they can feed you to the Your monsters. Goes, what are you pointing to me? You Your say, mind goes one place. Yeah, and With food. yours. I didn't think of food at all. I thought about my terror. But are you thinking about it now, though? Well, because you brought it up. Right. Okay. So wouldn't you want food immediately? Sure. Right. Well, because exactly. you want food right now. But then I might puke. About it, right? 100%. But I also know <laughs> I that. I just want drinks, to be honest. And we're going to, yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll eat. I mean, come on. You and I are going to, we'll do two things. We'll have a couple of drinks, and then where's McCook and Harloff yeah. eating? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll That's go to we City Walk beforehand, have a couple of <laughs> oh, shots, dirt. and you'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it'll be fine. I'll probably enhance it even more. Yeah. You'll be fine. Yeah. You're going to do it. So here's the thing. I was talking to my mom yesterday on the phone, and she was like, um, we were just talking about being scared and everything, and she's like, somebody showed me a video of you on Instagram of you freaking out when the girl from came in with a red suit on. I was like, yeah, it's from this movie, Us. Freak me out, da 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 Yeah. And she was like, remember when you fainted at that... that that haunted Your mom house. Said it. And I was oh, like, so what? I you fainted? fainted? She was like, yeah, you were like a little kid. I think you were like five or six. We took you to a haunted house and you fainted. <laughs> we thought that you had like a medical condition. <laughs> but you were just scared, just out, of scared out of your mom. Oh, Wait, how old were you? Like five or six. Yeah. On brand oh, even man. then. It was supposed yeah. to be like this funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to be this funny corn maze, yeah. right? My parents like, take us. We go pumpkin patching it's or whatever. Children of the corn. We're like a thing. They're like, let's go in this maze. And then it was during the daytime, my mom said. And... <laughs> Hell, this said, might like, be the origin story. A scarecrow story. popped out. I was like, ah! And I was just like, oh. <laughs> so, so I so wonder, Someone's though. calling me. Do we think it's my wife? Yes. Yeah. I, it's probably a no? salesman. Uh, no, it's not. I know it is. Oh, um, I wonder though if your scream as a five-year-old would have been even more high-pitched than it is now. Yeah, you heard uh-huh. dog whistles. Yeah, <laughs> that's what only you dogs in here. Yeah, yeah. there only was this dogs. place called Tracks Farm, and we would go every year. And the one year we got it, they they had those candy apples. You know, like the everybody puts them out, like those farms and everything. They put razors in them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh. Uh, and lead. I took a bite of the candy apple, and my two teeth. Came out in the candy. Oh, no. no. I was like a baby. Oh, you're a baby. My baby. Oh. I hear you. I hear you. What a mess you were as a oh, child. Oh, <laughs> the mess you now. Tra- <laughs> transferred over. <laughs> yep. uh, so, anyway, so that's good. We're going to be go- trying to do that. That'll yes. be a lot of fun for sure. Probably um, end of September, beginning of October is what I'm hoping. Okay. Well, we only have those two Thursday options, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. uh, other options and other things that you guys can do. We have a lot of fun stuff coming up uh, when it comes to the Schmodown stuff. We are going to be doing a big live streaming event this Saturday. Josh McCuga will be involved. He's going up against Late to the Party. We're going to smoke those fools. That's right. He's going up against Late to the Party. That will people. be going down. That is not a tournament match. People have been asking me. It's not a tournament match. Tournament doesn't start until a little bit after that. But we will have Josh McCuga, Elliot Dewberry versus Robert and Vanessa Late to the Party. And then the main event will be the singles tournament. Chance Ellison, reigning teams champion, versus William the Beast Bibiani, former singles champion. Get the Schmodown Live tickets, theschmodownlive.com. You can also, by the way, if you are a $10 patron, you'll get both that stream and the Mike Kalinowski, Janine the Machine live stream at the end of the month. So sign up to that today. Yes. What time does that stream start on Thursday? I believe 5 Saturday. p.m. PST. 5 p.m. Got 5 p.m. Got PST, got I believe. Got so got the got other got thing got that we have going on, and the Mike Kalinowski Janine one's going to be a little earlier in the day, around like the 11 o'clock. I put a picture up yesterday, the Schmodown Spectacular 4. Tickets mm. will be going up very soon. It's going to be downtown L.A., December 7th. Um, now, the patrons will get first dibs at the tickets when they go on sale, but we don't know exactly how. Maybe we could have a six-hour window or something, too, mm-hmm. before then it goes on to the public. We haven't decided that yet, but just to let you know, and all patrons probably. Originally, we were thinking tier-wise, but all patrons will get dibs to it right away, mm-hmm. uh, and then maybe five, six hours later, put it on for the public. That's December 7th. We're doing a fan expo during the Toronto Spectacular, so you can take pictures with the wild. Oh, you won't be there, but you can take pictures with with the fans. Yeah, maybe. Uh, No. Oh, we're going to Mexico for a big, oh, like fun. my sister-in-law's 40th birthday. Oh. Oh. Skip it. Yeah. Um, and, and then you take pictures. Cabo San Lucas. Cabo San Lucas? Are they Spanish? No, I don't <laughs> know why I did that. So you take pictures with the belts. You can take, there's going to be some fun like kind of uh, little interactions with the competitors. And it'll, it'll be very different from the normal meet and greet that we do. It'll be posters that you can have signed there. You can give away a lot of the, the headshots, the things that we do for the, for normally for like a lot of Patreon stuff, but it's going to be like like a little fan expo. We kind of modeled it off like what they do for WrestleMania. That's because cool. 
Both are spectacular. Um, and that all those go tickets go on sale very, very soon. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, and then we have, obviously, it, it's, the big one is October 19th right now, which is like a mini spectacular. The singles finale of the tournament and the Corruption versus Founding Fathers team title match goes down in Florida, October 19th. The SchmodownLive.com. Where in Florida? Not right now. Uh, it, 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 I'll do it at the end. Uh, it just it ruins the whole vibe of the thing. <laughs> and then at the at the end of it, it's uh, you do th- fucking Riley, and then you d- you basically <laughs> the fans fans will well done. get involved. Fans will get involved so by get by if you have five hundred if you have five hundred tickets. Once we sell them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? You should have stayed home. <laughs> <laughs> stayed home and let the kids shit in your face. <laughs> uh, she, I, she said zoobly zoo, man. I'm sorry. I had to say it. Don't do it during this. We're going to be on this promotion for Orlando forever. So, see? see no, too, 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 too slow, you little prick. Uh, so Quite now, the mood today. October 19th, 500 tickets. Once you have 500 tickets sold, the fans will get into a contest. And four people will be chosen out of the audience. And you'll win a ticket. If you win the whole thing, you'll win a ticket to Los Angeles, hotel in Los Angeles, and a schmodown match with any manager of your choosing. But we got to hit 500. We're a little over 300 right now. we still got 200 to go before we get to uh, October 19th. Anywhere near it, get there. At the that's very least, try a, to win a ticket to Los Angeles. That's such yeah. a cool idea Thank you, you yeah. guys came up with. I love that. Thank you. I can't wait um, to see that happen. That's going to go down. So Do anyway, you think everybody's so, studying right now? All those uh, comp- uh, all those people who have absolutely. tickets now? It's a lot of family ready. people that are coming in to try to do it, and there's new people. And I think one of the things, I got this big, long email yesterday from a, from a fan who said he bought 10 tickets because he said that he wanted, he took friends yeah. that Ne- our big movie fans who've never watched a show that he thinks could be amazing. Mm-hmm. Nice. And, and, be like yeah, that. That and, that's, and that's kind of the idea is it just mm-hmm. take, because what happens if one of those random people who've never seen the show before gets thrust into the spotlight? So bring your friends. Bring as many yeah. friends as you can. Thrust. Buy some tickets and just bring your friends. Thrusting um, is great. Yeah. All right. So uh, anything, <laughs> what, what else is going on in the world that you guys are want to talk about besides the fucking movie news? Um, I don't, I, Alex is in here, but he is awesome and he invited me uh, this weekend to right. see Latin History for Morons. Oh, no. Not, not because you think it's because you're Latino. Yeah. Well, right. no, it's because John Lee was almost one man show oh, that right. you can actually see right. on Netflix. But we got to see it at the Amundsen. So good. good. It's really good. I really recommend you guys watch it on Netflix if you can. Because right. it's it's uh, he's. Does he mentioned to Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julian Newmar. I, I don't want to spoil yeah. it. Where is Amundsen? Is that is that on Wilshire? It's on, no, I it's downtown. downtown. Oh, In the music right, center, right, right, right. Yeah. where the Dorothy Chandler is by the Walt Disney Concert Hall. I'm thinking, thinking of the before. Ricardo Maltalban Theater. I saw What? It's a Sesame Street there. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. I saw Avenue Q there, which is I've never seen it. It's on acid. To. I know. It's great. Oh, Avenue Q is the it's the best. It's I went to see Avenue Q in New York and I walked out over 30 minutes. Really? I, was, I was bored to death. <gasps> what? Oh, he doesn't you like, like the song? He doesn't like well, you don't like music. It's like I was like what am Wait, I watching? Wait, do you not like this musicals? Is... No, are you huh? kidding? Oh, I don't know. You what? have random you, you weird taste. You, you never talk about it on Thursdays and Fridays. You only talk about it on Monday through Thursday. Oh, right. How much you hate yeah. music. Right, right, I, right. My bad on that one. Okay. Yeah, it's third the worst. So none of them. Uh, one I've, single music. I've liked two. Yeah. And I was bored through most of it, except the fact that there was pop songs in it. So the Footloose, the musical I saw when I was like <laughs> 17, and I like all the music from Footloose because it's good. Yeah, yeah. And the second one I liked Kenny was Loggins. Wicked, but I only liked Popular and Defying Gravity. Other than that, I was pretty bored by the show. Yeah. Huh. Defying Gravity, that is such a musical kind of song. I, know. I can't believe you don't like it. Yeah, other. but it, it, like, it has a hook to it that like really brings you in. I didn't mind Rock of Ages until the end. Like Some of the songs were like, oh, mm-hmm. this is rock songs, and then all of a sudden at the end they're like, sometimes your dreams don't come true and you move to Glendale. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Do you like watching dancing though uh, I mean, he likes because like, what about like I West, like, like singing dance. in the rain or West Side Story? Any of the classics? Yeah, West Side Story, boring. Um, <laughs> singing in the rain has a couple cool songs, like scenes. I mean, dancing. The, the dancing is amazing in it's that movie. Good. Gene Kelly, anything yeah, yeah. Gene yeah, Kelly, and like what's your name? But this is like someone trying to convince you to watch Bachelor in Paradise, right? Yeah. Except good. It's, it's yeah, subjective. I mean, subjective. <laughs> but subjective. I, I, listen, I will give the art of the musical and everything in it way more credit than I will wait, give Bachelor in Paradise. That was this? a delayed uh, bit. Co- Cody is a dad ding. I so, love that. I want you to look on the table and tell, tell me what I'm doing right now. You're moving your feet around. I'm moving my foot around mm-hmm. wildly, extending my leg. Guess what I'm not hitting? 
Dorina's, Dorina's leg. Dorina. Not even touching it. And well, Dorina that's, that's is significantly. That's because they're I, all the way back. That's fine. Signi- but if I put them here, then yeah, but that's because I'm trying right here. Still not doing it. Significantly taller than Roxy. Mm-hmm. Not even, not even close. Significantly taller. Yeah. Right. Is what are you I? five 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 seven? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Roxy's like five two. Yeah, she's. So what? You guys keep kicking each other? She sticks her legs out. She was wearing boots for sure. I did hit you with my dog Martin's that one time. That was fun. Once out of every like three months. Okay. Roxy was doing it I'll every five seconds. <laughs> Fucking Roxy. <laughs> um, anyway, oh, Roxy's out. She's out of the show. <laughs> like, She's done. She's fired. What, so like should we all time. start kicking him? What? Can we all start kicking you? Yeah, I'll do the show by myself. I don't okay. care. <laughs> With your poop apple? With my poop apple. I did that once uh, for Far, Far Away when I did the that show back in the day. God, I wanted I to do that. it. I wanted to do it straight up. Where want, was Far, Far Away? Geek Nation. Geek Nation. I wanted yeah, to do. I wanted to, no, was, yeah, I wanted to do a full um, like Colin Coward type mm-hmm. version of it, and I did. I did. Yeah. For like, it was like an hour and a half. I just did. It was fun. I liked it. And it makes me realize I want to do it again. So get out all three. Get. <laughs> <You> ready? <laughs> Have fun. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. See uh, damn it! I thought you were all gonna really leave. Uh, anyway, so what would you do? If we left. What would oh, you I would like interview. I, I would interview myself. Yeah. I would have it would it would be a voice marathon, uh, and I would probably have so much fun because I wouldn't have to deal I'll with you. I'd gladly leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're the only one I'd want to stay. Yeah. Actually, Riley would be fine too. Dorian, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Sweet. Finally. Bye, guys. Finally, it's been great. Finally. I gotta oh. tell you, you know who I miss? Igla! Igla! <laughs> oh, you think oh, we're here for Igla? No. no, you didn't hear about Igla. Oh, what you would have loved this. What happened? So, what the about the Russian uh, vodka? Vodka. Right? Vodka. Yeah. Vodka. Vodka. It's right, it's right up. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> this guy. Really, that was going to be the wrong choice of words. <laughs> uh, oh, did you stop it right there in the station? I wasn't meant to say it. I, you ever, you know, say? When you don't have a slip of words and you go, oops, shouldn't have said that, I caught the slip before it happened. Thank oh, God. Because I was going to say that's right up your alley instead I was going to say right up your ass. And that's probably what wouldn't have oh, worked. So. Uh, in Russia, do, yeah. we put things in bottles and then we go all around and then we smuggle. Great. Smuggle it. And then you put the vodka Through up Siberian your ass. Through Siberian vodka. Asshole. You take the airplane bottle, yep. shove it up. Butt. Up your ass. No, Igla is, um, is, <laughs> is a writer. He's a writer for... He's, he's, he's a running a uh, Hawkeye. Showrunner Hawkeye. 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 Ah. So Good looking guy. guy. Looks like Jason Statham for what we found out. But Jonathan we just, Igla. Jonathan Igla. 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 And we just said like... Sound like when, Mugway. It's just uh-huh. when they look through... Mugway. Like, they're looking through the list and they go, Oh, today should we take to write this... <gasps> Igla! <laughs> 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 We found him. Where was he? He's he was in the mountains. <laughs> doing what? <laughs> Writing. What is he going to do next? Write more. What? Our project. Do it. Who? Igla! <laughs> what a way to get a gig. Exactly you know? how it went with Igla. Igla? Oh, they're just... I, you know who else Igla is friends with? Is Danish Christian Harlov. Yeah, Danish? Not anymore. Oh, no. They're in a massive feud. Oh, oh yeah, no. Yeah, what massive happened? Feud. Danish Christian Harlov uh, uh, hacked one of his mm-hmm. jokes when, that made it into one of his scripts. How dare Igla. So when he was moving around, his, you know, they, they, they did the Batman thing, and, and they said, Igla! And he said, Igla and Danish Christian Harlov! And Igla said, fuck that! Oh. Yeah, and that was it. Yeah. That was wow. a really good story. Is that man. the only yeah. word Coach he knows that. in English? Fuck that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Igla, Igla speaks English. Oh, okay. Igla is very good at English. Igla says, I wrote something to them. He speaks, he speaks English. Yeah. English. 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 Uh, I was speaking and writing. Thanks, okay. I was speaking and writing in English today, and I realized something. I wrote two things, a comedy about uh, two squirrels and, uh, and, uh, and a Russian a Russian maid named Frankunki. <laughs> Frankunki. <laughs> oh. Frankunki. Fran- Frankunki. Hello. Do you know Frankunki? This yes. is Frankunki. Frankunki 1 through 6, a uh, very, very popular action movie Hello. written by Igla. Our Russian audience is like, wow. Yes, they're very Our upset. entire audience is like, <laughs> <laughs> what are they Fair point. About? Yeah. You are correct Thank on this one, just, Christian. I just transitioned into uh, uh, Sash Baron Cohen's Israeli accent oh. real quick. My wife. Which, the spy. Oh, yeah, yeah guys. Really, I gotta watch. Yeah, we almost started Set up my television night, yesterday, guys. You'd be happy. You set it, it up, huh? Set it up, got the... the took me a while. How long was wow. Brett there to help you? Wow. He wasn't, but I definitely <laughs> called him. Definitely, definitely called him for the speaker part of it. Uh-huh. Uh, not the TV itself. The TV it. I, that kind of stuff, I feel... That, okay. That's my, that's my jam. That's I can do that. Yeah. Now, when you set it up, you put it on the wall, or is Oh, he jam? hung that up. Yeah, okay. Oh, there you go. So he did it. Yeah, he hung yeah, that up. I'm talking about setting up the actual television and stuff. Uh, but the actual setting up... And, and this mount, I mean, you could you could hang you could hang everybody up on this mount. It's like... Yeah. It, it is uh, like Cobra style. The end of the Cobra. It is... It's, Ooh, it's, a, it's, it's a great TV. So, 
that oh, you, now I know what I wanted to talk about today, know? and I totally botched it. I well, meant hold to tell it. You. I want to tell you about the fucking oh, speaker. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, we, now we have something else. You see, we're trying to fill time here. I so know. We got, so we. Yes, but this, but no news. So that's we're what fine. I'm saying. Yeah. But this, and you wanted us to leave. This, I still want you to leave. The speaker <laughs> is awesome. It's like the sound bar thing, right? And I was going to fight this thing yesterday <laughs> because for an hour and 15 minutes, I'm trying to figure it out. And it's like, I, I got it. I'm like, I got the woofer. I got all this stuff, too. So I call. The woofer. Brett, I got, I got the Brett. Woof. I'm talking to Brett. And he's just like, well, try this. Like, I did that. Try to do that. I'm like, look, when it comes to building stuff, I get it. I'm, 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 I'm special. Useless. That way. I'm useless. But when it comes to, like, the technology, I can do it. Yeah. So something's not right. And I'm putting on – the, the spy just to watch this. I got, I got, sure. I got rid of that stupid fucking forty eight frames oh, nonsense. Yeah, got rid of that. Good. Found oh, that out in a second. Yeah. Some people like struggle and they go, "How do you get rid of this?" Found, gone, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's like I switch over the audio. He's like, "Well, you got to switch over the audio thing." Did that already? Not working, right? So finally, did, did it. It's like, well, it's hooked up to the wireless. Bullshit. So then I take <laughs> the HDMI cord and I'm fucking around with it, and then miraculously. After about an hour and 15 minutes, the TV just pops up. Needs to be an AC2. I'm like, why'd you fucking tell me that an hour and 10 minutes ago? Just put an AC2 and worked. Oh, there done. It is. Watched a little bit. What with a smart you TV. You figured it out. Yeah, but well guess what, done, guess what I had to watch? What? Uh, yeah, right. Phantom Menace. Why? Because that's, <laughs> hey, what, that's what my daughter you suggested. You had to? Yeah. My daughter suggested, because I said to my daughter, I said, look, we're going to watch five minutes of a Star Wars movie to test out how this whole thing works. Mm -hmm. I said, pick a Star Wars movie. She said, she said Phantom Menace. She's eight. Right? Oh, wow. And I'll tell you what. When was the last time you saw it? Uh, I don't know, probably a year ago. But I watched it. I watched it differently. I watched it with different eyes this time around. Not you only closed them. <laughs> yeah, I closed them. I just passed out. Genius. Not only, not only did I watch them through an eight-year-old's eyes. Yeah. I watched mm. it through the eyes of watching a Clone Wars episode or like a Rebels uh, episode. That's nice. that's probably better. And I really enjoyed the first five minutes of the movie yeah. more so just than I five. ever have. No, 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 because I'm going to watch the rest of it. Okay. But I watched the movie, and I think it goes back. It just harkens back to the fact that we've talked about this. When the prequels ended and Revenge of the Sith was over, and that's the last movie you thought you were going to get, everyone went, that was it. It's kind of yeah. anticlimactic. That's everything you got. And now that you know you have all this material, it's just part of the family. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. part of the family. And that's why now watching, going back, I was shocked how much I enjoyed the first five minutes of – of the, the Phantom Menace last night. Because I watched the, it. What that even way. happens actually, in the first good. five minutes? It, I don't even remember. So they show up and I blocked it all yeah. out. I just yeah. can't pass. The racist aliens I can deal without. But like, but the, <laughs> but but when you get what are they racist against? Oh, it's oh, big time. Jeez. Uh, it's, yeah. I mean, yeah. They go to the ventilation shaft. It's, it's, uh, it's so really, bad. Really bad. It's so bad. But it's like they could have just done subtitles with the alien voices and it would have been totally better. Exactly. The old school Star Wars so much better and and would have been more effective. But. I watched it like a Clone Wars episode and like Rebels, and I and it starts off, and then the Jedi show up, and they have to like negotiate with the with, with you know the Viceroy, oh, right, right. and okay. and then the Viceroy send in the they don't want to mess with the droids cause you know what I'm mm -hmm. and and this whole thing goes down, and I'm watching, and I look over, and my daughter's got this big smile on her face, and she's watching the town, she's watching the lightsabers, and I'm like, that's what this movie is, yeah, it's just fun for kids, and yeah. it's a it's a cartoon, and. Treat it like a cartoon, and I, I'm telling you, I'm actually looking forward to watching the rest of it because I watched it that way, and I really enjoyed it. I can't believe you're finishing that and not the I'm, thing. I, I was talking What's that? to. No, I can't believe you're well, finishing Phantom Man is not the thing. Should I the watch thing? the thing? The thing, the I best movie that? ever, the best horror yeah, movie. Give yes. up. Yeah. I actually, I'm telling you, I set that studio up with the intention <laughs> of watching the thing. Mm -hmm. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. Go ahead. I don't think there was ever any intention there. No, I was talking to Cody and Cobster about um, uh, doing Death. like I wanted to do because last year we did Home Alone two for like a Christmas audio commentary. This year I figured we do Die Hard two because nice. it's another Christmas yeah, yeah. movie. It's basically the same movie. Airport. And then they're like, "Do you want to do Attack of the Clones?" And I was like, "That is a second movie, I guess." Yeah. And then I started doing my impression of like Master Sifo Diaz, <laughs> like that guy, I or girl, whatever oh, that right. thing is. Is so, yeah, I? Yeah. That's the only thing I can't take in that movie. Oh. I, I don't mind the rest of the movie. The, the dialogue the between one. Anakin and, and her in the field, like sand it's is only the worst. Are that you movie. making fun of me? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why do you love? No, that? that's no. It's horrible. Oh yeah. yeah. It's it's only, when they're rolling around yeah. like yeah. Bantha poop Brutal. or whatever that is. Yeah. The only criticism yeah. of that movie I've ever heard. Heard that I've never heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that stupid, tall, lanky robot yeah. alien. Going, Master Sifo Diaz. Like, Master Sifo Diaz. I like that. I like I'm like, that one. And the on. fact that you know who Sifo Diaz is amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. Because <laughs> that name stuck in my head so yeah. much. He's like, I hate that. All right, thing. let me give you a quiz. Okay. Uh, how many years has it been since Sifo Diaz took off? Mm. Are you serious? That's a question. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, Alex Damon would get would have yeah. got it got it before I asked. Of course I asked he did. Twenty. Close. 15. 
no a hole. <laughs> oh, thank you. I don't care. <laughs> right. Ten. Nice work, Roxy. Ten. Ten. Ten, ten years. Ten years. Yeah, ten years. That makes uh, sense. That was going to be my guess, damn it. <laughs> I'm, uh, just throwing back to Alex Damon, by the way. I mean, is that the story you want to tell us? No, no, no. Oh. I got to know. All right. Right. So, yeah, but yeah. Uh, Alex Damon, by the way, we'll have people keep asking, will the Star Wars championship be defended at Spectacular? And right. 100% it will. He's going to be going up against either Andrew DiMolanta, who mm-hmm. was the patron, mm-hmm. who you know had a really good showing at Star Wars Celebration, right? and Laura Kelly, who yeah. became a superstar she that was night? Great. That's right. Laura Kelly yeah. will play Andrew DiMolanta. The winner of that will play uh, Alex at this particular. By the Andrew. way, as, mu- as much as uh, I talk about the prequels, yeah. even though I know cast, the crew, and uh, yes. they're all awesome, I don't like the movies. Um, that tournament that we saw at Celebration, That's great. it's like any any time I see a Star Wars tournament for Schmodown, it's it's so impressive the to s- me. The, Star the Wars crap is, people know, yeah. it's it's the ridiculous. Star Wars matches have been some of our best. I mean, Ken Knapsack versus Sam Witwer is still yes. the, probably the yeah. greatest Schmodown it's match of all time. Crazy. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, I was. That was and the fun thing for me is watching that whole thing because I know nothing one well, percent at, my, at that, most. This right, was a right, conversation. Right. Oh, oh, I had a conversation with this on a, you know business conversation with somebody on the phone talking about the showdown yesterday, and we were talking about what's I think so intriguing about it is people don't realize some people when they don't tune in at all mm-hmm. they say well I'm not going to tune in because I don't know any of those movies I don't really care, but I don't, I can't catch a football the way the professional football players can right I can't hit a home run the way. Baseball players do it. And so yeah. when you're watching, I brought friends who had never seen it before. They didn't know any, like, like Makuga just said, they knew none of the answers. But when they were watching, like, they watched Dan Merle versus Irwin. Like, how the fuck did these yeah. guys know this? And mm-hmm. it was, they just wanted, they were on the edge of their seat, not trying to get it, trying to see if they were going to get it. Yeah. It's like Bibiani at the free for all. Bibiani is a perfect example. It's crazy. Yeah, perfect Julie's example. friend uh, came for a taping and she was like, Whoa! How do they know Whoa. this? Though? Yeah, th- right. it, it was like I'm impressed. Right, it was. It was like she said, it's like a sports. And I'm like, right. yep, yep, you got it. Exactly. You got it. You tuned in. So, um, no, about Andrew. No, uh, so Andrew Del Del Melanta. Melanta. De Melanta. His mind. wife, uh, Nikki, yes. is a huge Afternoons fan. Oh, nice. And she, Ken and I, that show is like an hour and 15 minutes of just tangents and all over the place. And just no. the last couple of weeks, she has been like graphing out what the show looks like via like oh, arrows flow chart, and flowchart. Oh, really? like, and then Josh went here and then came back. And, like all these arrows and all these things. That's good. The last episode was three sheets of graph paper landscape style of her doing it and Ken and, and Ken and I were like reading through it yesterday. I don't know how long it takes her but it's impressive. It's well, both of them, they're, bo- they're both yeah. great and they, they were at Chicago mm-hmm. because Andrew had a really good showing. Um, like I said though, I think Laura, Laura just just by a bit outshined him, just by a bit because Laura, we didn't know anything about. Andrew, we knew he was the patron. What did she do? Her. She is a she's a host of a podcast, um, a Star Wars podcast. She's a big okay. Star Wars fan, and I found I can't remember how I found her via Twitter or whatever, and I asked her if she wanted to be involved in it. And thank God that I did because she was great. Yeah. She was great, and I cannot wait to see her and Andrew because Andrew was very impressive. Mm-hmm. So that's a very worthy number one contender. Match. That was the match in the convention center, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 in front of one. like six or seven. But even the match at the, I mean the theater oh too God, is the, the same thing. Great. Watching yeah. Alex and Joseph, I'm like, yeah. how do you guys know this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So, they yeah. don't do but anything but learn that. I guess. I don't either way though, as much as I like Andrew and Laura. I just don't know who beats Alex. I just don't know who beats him. I know. Him. Unless Sam Whitworth came I was going to say, maybe Sam. Yeah. All right. How um, do we get George Lucas to come out and announce the match? That's... He, it's, I would love to see George Lucas just announce like, the, the announcements in the yeah, beginning. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> are, we let's, have, uh, are you ready? Are you ready? Alex Damon. And let's get ready. Down. That was t- too, a little too enthusiastic. I was going to say, well, um, you know, so, um, <laughs> coming, that's really coming great, to the ring, I guess, is um, <laughs> the champion. Uh, Alex, he's the demon. Uh, demon. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Oh, by the way, Conjure Club, no longer Conjure Club. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, he changed I saw his that. name. It's now VCR, which is perfect. Okay. Right. Uh, and he did, he, 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 did like a little ad for stuff. I watched. I watched the the Arnold as as Doc Brown again last night. It's Dude, very good. he's so good. Yeah. He is so good. Uh, and he's great he's, comedy. He's comedy. working on. He's working on the um, Aladdin, G. Arnold one. <laughs> G uh-huh. one, so yeah, we'll, yeah. Give, we'll give him a break before we throw another one at him. But like he, I can't wait to see it because he's he's just so he's so he's good. Great. At it. Well, it's, so speaking of Arnold, so last night Commando comes on oh, right? no. again. again, yeah, 
And Amanda's sitting there. What fucking there. channel is this? I, gotta... I usually like it... Cinemax or Showtime. Oh, okay. That's just them, the like, one movie night. they show. They show it all the time. <laughs> it's like it, it goes in. They'll show Predator and then they'll show Commando yeah. and they'll like uh, whatever. So it comes on and Amanda's like, oh, this again. But <laughs> she. So we both caught. I don't know if you've ever caught this in the movie, but when he throws Sully off the cliff, mm-hmm. right? Sully bounces. Yeah. yeah. And he and he. Well, no, he gets in the car and it's all dinged up. When he restarts it and pulls right, it's perfect yeah, and yeah. brand new. Yeah, yeah. And Amanda was like, wait a second, rewind <laughs> that. It's like, is the car? perfect and then the next scene he pulls into that motel parking lot and the car's fucked up again listen not only that he hits it at like 300 miles an hour mm-hmm. she's not wearing a seatbelt no. <laughs> <laughs> hits it at 300 miles an hour no seatbelt and just moves fine yeah, yeah. it just moves it totally, it's, uh, it's moves one thing perfect. I miss about the 80s man is the, the yeah. movies it's like oh there's no continuity yeah. there that's and all myself. and nobody nobody, nobody cared. cared nobody said nobody's like mm, no that's internet. actually yeah, no incorrect internet. Yeah. Yeah, no internet. The, yeah. the cops pull next to Ray Dong Chung right and look at her like hey what's up they don't notice there's a fucking missile launcher <laughs> in the back, back in the back. seat <laughs> yeah right? especially when she stands up I love that she stands up and just first goes to fire and fires backwards it blows up a shop and then they're like oh shit I love Dude, I've seen that movie at least a hundred. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> so I, the best is the the thought process behind Schwarzenegger just pulling a fucking bulldozer into the shirt. Like he couldn't just ripped off the chain he, and walked in. No, the bulldozer, the alarm, <laughs> and he has so much time to get all that stuff. <laughs> and the other thing is, dude, this is this is my favorite part. Talk about continuity. That's just like so. Arnold goes in there, goes into the raid on Chung. At the very end, they rescue Alyssa Milano, right? And she gives her this big hug. Yeah. Like, they, like oh, so good to see you. Yeah. As opposed to, who the fuck are you? Never yeah. met. Well, never they, met they ever. never met. Like, who are you? Dude, like, right. the, the amount of times that those guys shoot a machine gun at a standing still plane in the water, and like it's like a four-scene cutback. Like, you couldn't hit that plane one time, those soldiers. Ever. And Schwarzenegger's just with an Uzi, just like, done. Oh, it's it's awesome. so good. It's a I have great a question. Movie. If you guys had to pick only one action star that you can only watch their like that their person's movies, movies. who would you pick no from what era all time all time it's hard because yeah. you so wait, because like, now you, you got Will the John Wicks and you know what I mean all, I yeah all of them was, everybody that's an gonna, action hero I was gonna run away and say Arnold right away but if I say that, then I take away the Rocky movies. I gotta go Stallone. Mm-hmm. I gotta uh, go Stallone. Yeah. I can't take away yeah. the Rocky movies. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. about you guys? Listen, I, Rocky I mean, is action also. I yeah. Can't, yeah. I can't. I can't get away from and Rambo. Bad Boys or Bad Boys Two. Those are my favorite. I mean, I you have to take a Will Smith. Will Smith. Yeah. Yeah. You and can plus, watch like, Independence Day. I, Independence right. Day. I am legend. Like I can <laughs> get bounce. I Robot bounce, which is <laughs> sick. <laughs> Seven pounds or whatever that movie oh, was. God. Yikes. Eight pounds. That's a human. Eight pounds. Is that what it is? What about you, Riley? I'm leaning. To Keanu because I get speed, I was gonna say. I get point break. Oh, I get exactly, shot. that's yeah. what I. That was gonna be my pick. Why is that Keanu beating up all the ho hos? I, <laughs> um, I do. It's the okay. Lane. Get out. Yeah. Of yeah. <laughs> Next time he just takes rocks. <laughs> over to just the microphone t- yeah. towards your feet. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, let's get to some of this movie news that we need to talk about. What do we got? Okay. <laughs> Yesterday was like I'm like, where's the news yeah, here? Um, news well, James this Cameron. Is, this is literally how this came because normally Riley will text me like the night before and he's like, look, yeah. we need a title. Here's the news. Here's the stuff yeah. that happens, and we try to make sometimes you know something. We try to make something. This morning he's like, we still need a title. I said, ah, you take it. I trust yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Which is fine. So I don't, I, what is the title There's of some the show? TV by the news, way? Yeah, well, you, they're, you know oh. that's our main uh, Giancarlo Esposito and uh, Jamie Foxx. That's our that's our title. That's, do you want to talk about uh, that? I guess next time we'll yeah. I'll, I'll do the title. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wait, what about them? Yeah, it was. Do we want to go into the main topic no, no, right no. now? I just wanted to know. No, what it was. this is a. Uh, we'll we'll go to James Cameron. He was talking okay. about uh, Avengers Endgame taking over the number one all time. Yeah. And he said, you know what? This is this is how I feel. I'm really glad that people are still going over and over and over again into the theater yeah. and watching a movie. So Avengers Endgame is demonstrable proof that people will still go to a movie theater. The thing that scared me most about making Avatar 2 and Avatar 3 was that the market might have shifted so much that it's simply no longer possible to get people that excited about going and sitting in a dark room with a bunch of strangers to watch something. So he's he's giving credit and he's saying, good, the, the movie going theater people experience still is watch, still going. People, people still want to go to the big... What? What is what is the totals now? Do we know? Can we bring that up, Cody? If you have a, if you have like, a did they hit three billion? No, no, no. Um, I don't know. Shit. I mean, it's like uh, was it two point eight yeah, worldwide? Worldwide, please. Uh, let's see. Worldwide, Avengers is two point seven, two point seven nine. Okay, oh, and they were two close. Seven, close. Yeah. Getting close. Right. Yeah, but it's it's pretty sweet. Uh, yeah. Are they gonna re- Do you think they're gonna like re-release it around Oscars to try mm-hmm. and get more? I don't know. 
Because I, I would imagine there's a does, lot of it still in the theater. So does right? anything from Avengers Endgame get nominated? Yes. What? If, if other you know, than other than effe- yes other than effects, what would get nominated? But I'm saying I'm saying besides effects, like the big the right. Big that's what I mean. I don't think the so. only thing that I the only one that I think could get nominated would be Robert Downey Jr. I don't think he, he and got I, nominated. Here's the thing. Because he, could, he, goes, he could get nominated for Best Supporting Actor because there's no real lead of the movie, right? right? So he could be Supporting Actor. And remember, he was also nominated for Tropic Thunder. Okay, right. now Tropic Thunder was a comedy that mm-hmm. those movies never, and, and for the, especially how controversial that, that role in general was, yeah. the fact that he got mm-hmm. nominated for that. This was the last time that we're going to see him as Tony Stark. And people don't realize, the Academy Awards do, a pay, do pay attention to money. Yeah. They pay attention to money, how much money a and movie makes. Oh, well, yeah, that's why Bohemian Rhapsody won a bunch of Oscars. And, and it's the same reason why Avatar was also yeah. looked upon and Titanic looked upon. It, they're good movies, but still, it, it, there, there's a reason why that they've got so much press and so much notoriety. Um, I think it's possible that Robert Downey Jr. gets nominated. However, because of the Joker also now starting to make a play, mm-hmm. two comic exactly. book movies in the same run, Not I happen. think the smaller Martin Scorsese type uh, movie has a much but better shot than than. Are we in, saying I that agree. the Joker is a? I mean, they keep coming up. It's, like, it's not a comic movie. It's not your comic book movie. It's not your typical it's comic, comic book. It's a comic book. It's a comic book movie. But do you think the Joker? The yeah, but do you think that that the, the Academy Award looks at that like as? A, I mean, the fact that it won the what the Venice the Golden, the Golden Street, Lion yeah, or Golden whatever, Goose, yeah, whatever. Golden, <laughs> Gold Lion or whatever it's called. Golden Lion. I think I think that that's that's huge. You know, I think yeah. that that yeah. that puts it in the serious movie category. Right. Yeah. Or because uh, I'm trying to remember. I mean, obviously Heath Ledger. Uh, Roma, well, it was Roma last year. What, no, no, I mean, I mean, I'm trying to remember like what uh, other categories uh, superhero movies have been nominated in, other than. Yeah, Dark Knight. Right, Dark Knight. Right. Well, Logan was nominated for Best Screenplay, that's Adapted true, Screenplay. Right. Yeah. And so, so it's so that's Logan is closer to a Joker, Joker movie where they're right. more serious. Not movies. not this big three hundred, three hundred and fifty million dollar budget movie like Endgame. So exactly. But uh, you know, Black Panther best picture, so could Endgame oh, kind of that's what go it was. in Black there. Panther. I just thought Blank. Downey, I just thought Downey was so I've I've seen him over he's and over. Good. He's so good in that role. I think he's, he's good, so but good. I think that it's I mean, if you look at most of the movies this year, there's so many there's so many good movies. There's so many good actors in it. I don't know. I think it's going to be hard it's, to it's get a him long nominated. Shot. Yeah. It's a long shot. They they certainly have the money to make the campaign behind them if they wanted to. But I think I think the smart play is to go after supporting. Don't go after don't go after main for for Downey for Downey. Do you think Joaquin's going to get it? Best, I think. Yeah, from what when all this buzz all is, so I haven't even seen the movie yet, and I would tell do you that probably. I, it looks I, like you don't it. think the Russo brothers will get best director? Z- possible. Mm, Z- I don't possible, think so. but I don't no. think so. <laughs> possible. No. I, think, I, I do. I, I don't think I so. just think that that's a harder one to get when you yeah. when you're going to get closer to all these movies that start piling in from October on because yeah. you're going to start getting the big I, the big Oscar and movies. as much as and as much as uh you know we like these movies a, a lot of Oscar voters voters don't think that they're that great I feel right, like right 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 yeah. or they always kind of push like anything that's like fantasy or or horror they just kind of push I, away normally I, I agree with you on that 100 percent I just think like I'm telling you like people don't realize how much box office does affect opinion when it comes to voting. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. that's the only reason why I think that it's an outside shot that yeah, they I mean, can get some notoriety on If it. they do the whole uh, 10 category best picture, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Endgame, if Endgame ends up there because Black know. Panther did that one time. Yeah, I, don't I know. think it will. I do. I honestly do. I think it'll get best picture. I think it'll get best either actor or supporting actor. I think you're right to go for supporting. It'll get the graphics ones. It'll get the, you know, the technical. Yeah, or that sound. Kind of it has and, a chance. And I think yeah. it'll get nominated for Best Directors because here's uh, what I think. is that, and, and this is just my opinion, but what the hell was that? What was that? Uh, something fell out there. Is that it's way more impressive what the Russo's brothers pulled off than like you know, a, a one man show about a spoon that's dramatic and there's a gay yeah, guy. Yeah, but that's but that's what you but that's what you you feel the Academy Awards feel the opposite. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's uh but who knows? It's gonna be very interesting kind of going towards the end. I think uh that the only shot and again out of the big awards are I think Downey's got the best shot. Because also because people because it's his last time. It's his last shot being rewarded for it. How many times do you see in T V a show that maybe shouldn't have got nominated, but they did because it was their last season. Yeah, you know well, they do that with movies too. Yeah, I yeah. mean they 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 like Russell Crowe got Gladiator Best Actor really because of The Insider. It just reminded me of this is two thousand and two thousand two two thousand three. We're all watching a fight. I don't remember who was fighting. Went Delahoy or something, right? Delahoy. Yeah, and we're and it was thanks. And it was this big party, right? And everybody's watching, and in the crowd, flat really flash Russell Crowe. Mm. So it's quiet. 
and out of nowhere, Dagnino goes, look, it's Russell Crowe. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. Dead. Oh, no. not, not one person reacts. And he's just like, it's Russell Crowe. Oh, and then like, no. everyone looking around, he's just like, Dagnino's like, uh, <laughs> wait, it's Russell Crowe? It's like Russell Crowe. That's Russell Crowe. <laughs> kind of big Russell Crowe thing. Russell, it, he, it was like he couldn't control him. So yeah. he just like, look, it's Russell Crowe. Dude, it's like the time we were at the, this bar in, on Melrose and Gerard Butler walks in and Tom goes, it's Gerard Butler. I was oh, like, all right, man. It's so yeah. embarrassing. It's, it's I amazing. don't like that. Cool, I don't know. Cool. I don't know if I had more fun uh, in New York as much as I loved, I loved the, the live event. I loved it. Loved the stand-up show the night before. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. I had such a great time with that idiot at uh, the Mets game on on Thursday night because Come we on. just it, was, well, it, was, it wasn't just you know obviously he's one of my best friends yeah. and but being able to just chill, he and I cracking a couple of beers chilling out at a Mets game and realizing I wanted this it was normal yeah it was just normal I, was, I think when I, like I don't know about normal Tom, <laughs> it, was, it was normal well being with Tom normal was never for normal you, you know guys, what I mean but just, no no yeah but I just, how, that's like Comic Con when we hung out with him that was yeah, super fun yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. just able to crack a, a couple beers and just hang out I think out. Tom and I silently told each other that like when we both found women in our lives that maybe us hanging out together just not he and I idea. probably not the best idea yeah, sure. like, we didn't say it to each other but we said like he and I got into some trouble when we were single I think you guys told that one story about the couch no no I took his girl and his and Riley's girl dancing and that was pretty fun yeah so okay. you guys don't even fun. know yeah you're fine <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> you, you weren't Tom there and I, yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's, yeah, that's it you, was, you, what you just described is like watching something on the Disney channel yeah like, oh that's cute that you guys think that that's yeah. what happened you can go ahead yeah mm-hmm. it's fine, fine. <laughs> do your uh, weird little leather pants thing what do you got what do you got against leather pants you should try them they would look great on you do you have a leather pants suit I, feel I like don't, that. and I will never. Why not? I do have a sweet suede blazer that looks sw- like awesome when I'm on a horse. When you bought the package, it said sweet suede. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sweet suede. Sweet suede. That's I, a great nickname for it somebody. Is. What are those guys? Uh, some guy, let's say Louis Sampson was the guy's name. And ladies and gentlemen, sweet suede Sampson. That's sick. We need oh, to get yeah. a Sampson competitor in the Schmodown ASAP. Right I, I have a question because of we were talking about superhero movies and Joker. Do you guys think it's weird or have you or is it just me that I keep seeing this on social media and reviews that people are worried that this movie might cause people to be violent? And I'm confused. Joker? Yes, because that's a lot of movies. <laughs> like a lot it's of movies everything. are like it's it's, like John Wick. I loved the John Wick yeah. movies, but they glorify ammo it's and am- ammunition. I, that's so weird it's that people think that. It's the person watching the movie. Right. It's the person watching the movie. It's like how, you know, it's like, yes, there are, there are certain, like I played a lot of violent video games when yeah. I was younger. I didn't ever shoot anything up. I didn't ever do anything. It's like, it's, like it's, it's the person who's watching it. It's, 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 it's not... It's it's a very it's a very long well, conversation. No, yeah. no, it's just it's just weird that people think that that's I don't think just it's that weird. movie. I th- here's what I'm thinking is is that there are a lot of people out there that have some depression issues, and right. I'm sure yes. that they're going to watch the Joker. Mm-hmm. And the Joker, I'm I, to listen it. based solely on Perry's tweet. I'm li- I'm nervous for this movie because it's kind of like was a tweet. Oh well, she was like I was very disturbed yeah. by this she movie. Not like it? Of, she did no, like she it. Said oh. she she did, liked it, but she, she said it sat with her for a long time. Okay. Which is w- what what I'm getting out Sign of this of whole movie. thing. Good yeah. movie. Then. Is that people are going to see it and be like, Yeah, that's right. That's what I should do. It's not John Wick is like somebody's chasing me and I'm a fucking super ninja, right? What's the difference? Commando, though? It, there's a Cause, huge cause difference because it deals vi- with mental health no, and people. But- yes, because people have mental health problems. Okay, and they we, see this right. as a thing, and they're like, "Well, if that's what you should do, that's what you can do." It's a it's a situation. But then, oh, Silence of the Lambs won what like five Oscars? Yeah. yeah. So why why was nobody totally worried then? Movie. I disagree. Totally different. Well, you movie. haven't I think, seen it. No, you guys have seen it. So no, I know, but I, I, I mean, you're right. You're right. I should I you know I should have the opinion after I watch it. I just um, it's one thing to be like, okay, this movie is disturbing or it's unsettling. Like some people are calling it a horror movie. I'm like, great. But if you watch a bunch of horror movies, like that's the whole point of horror. That horror releases like Wes Craven said it. Horror releases fear. It doesn't it doesn't create. fear. Fear, right, uh, like when you watch these movies. Depends movie. on who watches the movies. But yeah, but then you're, but then you're talking about. You're okay, talking so about we shouldn't show these movies because no, this is going to happen. We're right? not saying that. I, I, I just think these movies like, help you, like actually, like, I, I like, totally like talk, like actually think about the human condition. I totally disagree. I think that there's a lot of people that are normal that, like us, that have we're fine. I don't think anybody's normal. 
I think we Whatever all have issues. you want to say. What I'm saying is that there are a lot of people out there that will see the Joker and think to themselves, yeah, that's happened to me. I'm going to go do this. It's different than a John Wick or an action movie and all that stuff. This is a it is a deep dive into a man's mental state mm-hmm. and how he turns into a ser- like a serial psycho. Like Silence, Silence of the Lambs. Of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs, he was already a serial killer. It didn't go into his mental state. It went into Clarice's finding him. Right. It was no. not about that. This is a character study on mental health, and it's dangerous. It's a dangerous movie. Is it movie. actually mental saying, health? Yes. Like it does, is Have that you watched the trailer? Have you this seen not, the movie, this though? Is not yes. the only, this is not the only movie. This is not the only movie to do that, though. That's my point. It's just the only the difference is that because it's taking a, car- a character, a pop of villain, from right. villain from a Batman movie, exactly. that makes it different. There's shit. Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. You know, I mean, American uh, Psycho. You mm-hmm. know, so there, there's a lot of movies out there that that glorify, not not even glorify, but, but put a spotlight on it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's I I agree and disagree with what you're saying because. You can you, me, and hopefully everybody else in this room watches mm-hmm. it and says, "Well, I see what they're going for there, and trying to uh, to understand that, that that could be very dangerous mm-hmm. if that happens." But then there's other people that are not mentally right that are watching this and maybe have a different opinion on it. But that's any movie. That's any. That's movie. my point. That's yeah. So that's yeah. my point that like th- I'm my, just my, this goes my into particular a point. Place. Well, we we have to see it to talk about yes. it, obviously. Yeah. But but my point is just more so that that's that's it. Like, what's the difference between this movie and a bunch of other movies that we've seen? And, and, and the I fact that people the keep, keep blaming video games, it, that's exactly it's what it the is. It's the times right now. That's exactly Social that's media is putting a, a, very a, a, a bullhorn on this, and mm-hmm. people are walking out of this movie and saying that, and people are picking up on it, and then that narrative is created. People when, are having this conversation. Right. When I said dangerous movie, I didn't mean like nobody should go see it. or that it's, it's, it's yeah, art. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that these movies can be dangerous in right. the eyes of the wrong people. Right. We also don't know what the hell the movie yes. is. I mean, we, I mean, Dorian and Perry do and, and Frosty do. They've seen the film. I don't know yet um it, it, right around the corner because you know another movie that has a lot of killing in it that i want to see and it's very different rambo rambo comes yeah. out like rambo. next week so or whenever it goes next week or two so that one's one that we'll be seeing and talking and, about yeah and there's a lot of those movies like action movies from the 80s where people are just shooting people like well, i just commando. think it's commando. that's what i mean i just think it's it's the same thing to me i'm yeah. like i don't i'm not gonna go shoot people up because i saw a movie you and i aren't because yeah. yeah, people people in this room aren't gonna do that but, but there are people out there that will but they're not gonna do it because of a movie they're gonna do it because of how they grew up or other mm. things, not just I mean, exactly. other, yeah, there's other so things, much. so many different because factors. of things yeah. that they unfortunately like has other affected things. them negatively yeah. in their lives. It's not, it's not the movie, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, that went to different places. Yeah. I didn't but thought the, it let's uh, can, uh <laughs> Rambo <laughs> for tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We're yes, gonna yes, do yes, a giveaway yes, yes, tomorrow, yes, 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 yes. and we have five tickets, five pairs of tickets Ooh, for, for the Rambo for New York. So just it's essentially like the premiere. Stallone's gonna be there. Stallone's gonna be there. We're gonna ask hardcore Rambo fans questions. So only call tomorrow if you if you are gonna be in. New York area, you know a lot about Rambo, and you want to go hang out with Stallone at the at the Rambo premiere. Yeah. Where's Rambo? Where's Rambo? <laughs> Where's Rambo? No, 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 Rambo. What up? I'm behind you. Where's Rambo? <laughs> you fucking texted me. <laughs> Where's Rodney? And that was in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Can I play it for Darina? Yeah. Here we go. My mother breastfed me through a straw. Well, my old man took me to the zoo. They thank her for returning me. Good. You listen to what he's saying? I looked up my family tree. Two dogs were using me. That's the story of my life. No respect. <laughs> It right. just so, reminds me of that uh, Uber driver we had in Comic-Con. It's a 1990 <laughs> pilot with Rodney so Dangerfield. It's a 1990 pilot with Rodney Dangerfield. This yes, is not something somebody show. remakes? Oh, no, no, no. That's, a, that's, an, actual, that's an actual theme song. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hollywood Greenland. Oh, and by, by the way, awesome. I, have to, I have to say, uh, Bibiani yesterday wrote, wrote yeah. me right away. And he's just like, uh, you know that we talked about this on Critically Oh, he tweeted. They did, yeah. I was like, I know. Like, I, I, Okay. Take it. Go go check out on Critically Claimed on the Schmoes uh, podcast feed that they they uh, both him and Whitney Seibel kind of yeah. broke down all of it. I miss uh, music like that. Um, what else? Oh, so this is best. You you'll get a kick out of this because you'll know. Okay. And don't worry, everybody. The parents out there, I'm not a horrendous parent. Um, but <laughs> my my daughter was was quoting Andrew Dice Clay last night. Oh, Perfect. Nice. But not in, not in a way not in a way that it's it, people the would bad be, stuff. No, yeah. it's what uh, she was she was showering and I look over. And there's uh and there's there's the j- j- Jehovah the j- Joba j- yeah. conditioner. Jehovah. So right away I think it dies because he used to do this thing. Maybe I don't want j- Jehovah. <laughs> Maybe I want part. So I started saying that right. That's it. That just just those lines. And so the other that. day last night I go. I mean, Maybe I don't want Jehovah. And then I hear from the other room my daughter. Maybe I want part. 
it. <laughs> she screams it. And I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Perfect. And then I actually listen to the 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 thing. People are slipping and sliding like it's somebody's load. That part I didn't show her. <laughs> it's like, and you know, and I saved myself two bucks. And then, oh, I got to, you know what? I'm going to try to bring that clip up after the, uh, yeah, after the break. Cody, Cody we'll, we'll find it, but it's, it's Andrew Dice Clay. Um, just put shampoo pert rant. And I have to get to the point. There's, a, there's, there's someone who leaves in the audience to get offended. And the, the, I, I'll, just, I'll just play. It's an illusion. It. Fuck it's, you. No, it's the best. The woman just goes about, about the person. Just, she's got some sense. She's leaving. And then how he responds is epic. Yeah. We'll, 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 play awesome. that. we'll play that after the break. The, um, uh, the, I saw it in like a similar vein, totally whatever, like talking about the, the inappropriateness. There's a, a concert hall. Somewhere, I don't know where it was, but it was posted on Barstool. And it said, floors are wet. John Mayer's back. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Pretty good. good. Yeah. Uh, Riley, what else we have in this shit news day? Yeah, shit news day. Well, uh, not surprisingly, from Disney Plus, they're bringing back all the old Marvel TV series, so you can get like the X Men and Spider Man. Oh, are you talking about the '90s series. cartoons? Yeah, the '90s Ooh. cartoons. Cool. Fantastic Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Cool. Like so yeah, yeah. That that's the big one. But um, yeah, the old Spider Man one, cool. and Hulk, and Fantastic oh, Four. So much material on Spider Man. That's one of the main reasons I bet you they they they, they said you know we got to buy Fox. So look at the library they have now. They can <laughs> stick on Plus. But they got there. It is. Yeah. yeah. Ron yeah. Wasserman. Is this? He X-Men? composed that. Did he? Yeah. Okay. Is this the one that they played at the beginning of the arcade game? Uh-huh. No, it's it was the '90s uh, theme song. No, for the no, cartoon. I know, but I think they they did played they? this song. Maybe actually. Yeah. At the I think they did. Yeah, Maybe. I think you're right. I think I might yeah. be right. But yeah, it was a great theme. I'm I'm that's a really good like, game. Surprised that uh, they the never best. transferred that over. Who did the score? Was it Henry Jack? No, he did the he did first class. Who did the? Oh, it was uh, uh, John, John Ottman. John Ottman. Yeah. Are you talking about the first X Men? The two thousands. I, I was. Yeah, he did. I was wondering why they didn't. Yeah, it was John Ottman. Don Ottman. I yeah. was wondering. I, the first one was somebody else. Two thousand. The, the first X Men, I think, was like some like Michael. You're something. right. He came on for X two. Th- exactly. Uh, yeah. And then right. he came back for Days of Future challenge. Past. Uh, you, most people I would challenge on a, a score, but I'm not going to challenge you on that. Can somebody look it up? Yeah, Cody, can we check up the uh, who did the score for 2000s X Men? See who wins, who wins, who wins. It's got to be Dorina. Come on, phone. Come it's, on, it's phone. No, it's on. not a win. Dorina, Dorina, Dorina's going to win. I don't know. Where's Rodney? We just got to do the score for Where's Rodney? Oh, he's really going. He's going deep into what Michael Kamen. Michael Kamen. Yeah. That's what yeah, it was. So, oh, which also did one of my. He also did one of my favorite miniseries. Can you guess the miniseries, music wise? Um, True Detective season one. No, but. You're you're in you're Miniseries, in a, you're in a, you're in a, you're in a yeah you're in you're in the a neighborhood Genre? you're in a neighborhood I'm not gonna say what neighborhood because Generation Kill no but let's see if we can guess anybody guess Dorina mini series no. mini series no. one of my I'm favorite mini series of all know. time I think a lot of people's favorite Band of Brothers ah oh yeah why didn't I go there first idiot yeah. he also did uh, Iron Giant you got stupid it, dumb dumb he also did Iron Giant did he and that's Die a Hard good one apparently you know that's a good Iron Giant so good the first one no he didn't do. Die Hard One. Well, just click, click on. That's what it says. Really? Yeah. Michael Kamen did Die Hard One. He did Music all the older Michael ones. Michael Kamen. But yeah, so John Ottman did X, X2, I believe. Did he? Um, have you guys? Let's see. Die Hard. He did. Yeah. Wow. He did. Did yeah. he also do Roadhouse? Did he get credit for Roadhouse? Yep. Yeah. Because it, I don't necessarily know if he actually did Roadhouse because they just literally take. Joel Silver did both those movies, uh, and they literally take. The music from Die Hard and stick it in uh, Roadhouse. At, at uh, yeah. Do you guys have a favorite movie action theme? Yes. Favorite movie action theme? Yeah. Okay. Bad Boys? Yeah. yeah. Who did that? Yeah. The musical but, genius? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if that's his name, the musical genius. That's his name. Ladies and gentlemen, TMG. Or her, or her name. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, Predator's pretty damn good. Do, 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 do you know who did Predator? Don't, don't answer. Brad yeah. Fidel? No, that was Terminator. I'm not sure, actually. Alan Sylvester. Sylvester. Uh, I was just going to say John sense. Sylvester, but I know that's not a real person. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Sylvester, Sylvester the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John Sylvester did it. Uh, what else we got in this shit day? <laughs> It's really, really. Your positivity is. St- well, what would Riley's favorite thing? Uh, I yeah. think I would no, go no, James no. Horner's uh, Aliens. Uh, Ooh, that's a good one. Is that an action movie or is that a horror movie? Well, aliens, ball, I would go more action. action, action. action. action oh yeah, horror, Aliens is like a- it's like action sci-fi, I would and throw, the first one is horror yeah. sci-fi. Got it. Got I would got throw got Fidel's got Terminator. I was gonna say that's too. one of my favorites. Yeah, it's great. Two, one or two? The same thing. Oh, it's he does not both. The main thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right, shifting. Let's, let's shift and go back to the Russo brothers, who are done with Marvel for now. Yeah, they're gonna do some more movies. Star Wars. But they were asked. They were asked by Sci-Fi Wire, 
would you do any other Marvel movies in the future? Yeah. And they kind of revealed that Fantastic Four is their favorite oh. character. So it's a maybe good way to when, save it. Yeah. Good way to save it. Maybe when they. Um, he basically said, I grew up on John Byrne's X-Men run, yeah. um, and Ben Grimm was my favorite character growing up, The Thing, and Fantastic Four is now Marvel Fold. There's a lot. Silver Surfer's an amazing yeah. character. So maybe. Yeah. All right. Be yeah. They can Bring come back, back Chickless. For... I know, right? Nah. Chickless was great, man. He was good. I he was agree. Good, but, but he's too old now. As, well, how old is The Thing? Um, Does it matter? He's a stone he's man. Younger. Exactly. He's, he's supposed to be younger. Oh, is he? He's supposed to mm. be younger when he gets... Oh. Who, who are you going to put in there? Tom Hardy. Uh... That's, just, already, that's a good one. Hold on, I got one. Did you see Boss Logic? <laughs> Jacob Tremblay. Boss Logic, <laughs> Boss Logic did uh, The Rock as the thing. Oh, did yeah, it? looked pretty good. Great. Really? It, it was, was awesome. Freaking Rock already. Uh, <laughs> He's a rock man. There it is. He's is a stone man rock about, man. Because if not, I'm going to shift uh, to the break Let and me, we'll come back. We'll yeah. do a. Uh, no? yeah, right. There's nothing. Cody, you ready for a break? Have you guys even talked about who you would do a fantastic forecasting? No, we don't need to. Let's go. Let's go to break. When we get back. We will not only will we play that wonderful Angel Ice Clay yelling at somebody, we will also talk about the main topic here. John Carlo Esposito and Jamie Foxx are up for roles in something. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Perry here to let you know that Movie Talk is moving. We've had a great time in this 3 p.m. Pacific slot, but guess what? We want you to start your day with Collider Movie Talk, so we're moving. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to get a longer show with some brand new segments, so tune in starting Monday, September 16th, 9 a.m. Pacific. See you there. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Time. Well, you know, if you've been watching us every week, you know we break down the latest and the greatest in the world of sports, talk about the big issues, the big games, all of it with a rotating band of guests like Matt Nose and Josh McCuga. We've had Taylor Bashotti on. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember to subscribe to Collider Sports YouTube channel for all the sports goodness. Hey guys, it's Riley here. Let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. You know it, right? It drops every Thursday on Collider Conversations. And I have guests from all across the space. John Roca, Gray Drake, Alexander Desplat came on at one point. We talk everything from movies, we talk about life, and everything in between. What do you want to hear? What do you want to talk about? It's the Riley Roundtable every Thursday on Collider Conversations. You get it there. Hi, I'm Koi Jandro, host of Collider Heroes, and I'm here to tell you we've got 20-minute episodes coming at you on Collider Video, on the YouTube, as you've always loved it. Plus, now we've got hour-long podcasts dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, every week we're going to try to get some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows you love. So, video, podcast, interviews all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. Well, hello there. I'm Ken Napsok, one of the hosts of Collider Jedi Council, and I'd like to invite you to listen to our show, watch our show. It's on every Thursdays on the Collider video channel, and it's also available in podcast form if you'd like to listen to our sweet voices. On Collider Jedi Council, me, Christian Harloff, and a bevy of guests, I say, talk Star Wars. We celebrate Star Wars. We dig into the Star Wars news. We speculate everything about Star Wars including your questions. So join us on Collider Jedi Council. You're going to have a great time. What's up, Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com, where you can find the top stories throughout the week in the world of professional wrestling. Wow. If you're a wrestling fan like myself, then you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself, where we pick apart and, and talk about every little thing that happened on the blue brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet. Boom! Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Jesus, Rule of Two is Jesus, that show. Jesus, it drops on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise.
Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. A new episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well, every Saturday and Sunday. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm Christian Harloff, I'm the host of Collider Jedi Council. We talk about everything Star Wars. It's movie news, it's canon, it's all of it. We take questions from you guys. How do you do it? Main channel, that's right, right here. Subscribe to this channel. But if you wanna just listen to it, you got the podcast feed too. Apple Podcasts, you can listen to it in your car. Do all of it. It's Star Wars, episode nine's coming out. And then after episode nine, you got TV shows. So we're gonna be your sports center for Star Wars. Do it, come on, be real. Hi, I'm Amy Dallin, one of the hosts of Collider Heroes. And starting right now, you can catch our show Tuesday nights with a new Collider Heroes and a longer Collider Heroes podcast where Koi and I are going to talk your ears off. You already know that's coming. So make sure to go to YouTube, subscribe, and find us on the Collider Heroes podcast feed for all of that sweaty goodness. The Witching Hour is all over Collider right now. You can listen to that horror film podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about witchiness. We talk about slashers. We talk about space horror. You name it, all on that show on the Collider Factory feed. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out. Get scared. Hopefully you survive the Witching Hour. Coming back, coming back. Now we're back, now we're back. And now we're back, back, back. Back, back, collateral lap. Back, back. The worst show. Back, back. The best show. We're back, back. We're all dummies. Yes, we are. With poop apples. What's up, poop apples? That's your names. Nice to have you all back. We are back here on this wonderful day. I was about to say October 4, 2019. That's not the day. Uh, the day is today, the 12th. And we <laughs> do, you are gonna... that, do you guys know that in certain parts of the country where like horses are used as main modes of transportation, I say this because my aunt lives in a town like that, is that they call road apples horse shit. Oh, nice. Horse shit is road wow. apples. I, like is what they call yeah. it. I don't know what road I, apple is. I've heard that before. I've heard that. Oh. It's like, that's what they call it because it looks like a giant apple on the road. Oh, it's poop. Yeah. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, this main topic in a second, but we did bring up <laughs> the fucking jiboba shampoo. <laughs> Maybe mm. I want part. And I mentioned what happens afterwards, and this is what happens afterwards. It's some of my favorite stuff. Not a two bucks. Nobody fucks with Dice. Dice does the fucking... What are you going? You gonna go take a dump? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> eh? It's a lady. It's a guy, Jerko. <laughs> <laughs> we got a chick jerk off here. Our first of the night. Our first. Just listen up, shut your mouth, and pay attention. Maybe you'll do a little better next time. You shut up. <laughs> you shut your fucking hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's, listen to the rest of it. It's amazing. Uh, the, the, the one insult that the guy says to him that it's like w the the couple that's arguing with him, yeah. that it's so under the radar. And I, my friend, the Barnaby guy, I told you about, we, we use the insult all the time that they use on dice. The guy goes, you're about as funny as a bottle of milk. It, no one picks up on it, right? And I, except me and my friend. And we started saying to everybody, someone would, would bomb a joke, you're about as funny as a bottle of milk there, buddy. It's like, it's like what is that? I've, I've never heard that saying. It's Until great. that day, yeah. you're about as funny as a bottle of milk. It, it really, because... Not funny. Bottle it's milk? not funny. Not funny. So what was real, that? What happened? I don't know. Some well, like coke flash? was that a bug? Like try to the up my nose? Is that, is that what it is? Or was it last night's escapade <laughs> coming back to haunt? Oh. I do not do cocaine. <laughs> oh, Captain Leatherpants over here no. doing no, no. a little yeah. cocaine thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, little shit <laughs> apples, little <laughs> shit, shit, like shit apples, little apples in the snorts. <laughs> Hey, oh. what are you doing last night? Well, yeah. we stayed out at the three in the morning doing the shit apples and the snorts. You call it the old nasal nello. Snorties. Uh, seriously, are there like weird like uh, fruit flies or something in here? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, so... yeah, the dead animal. Is the dead animal I, gone by? I, I, I think so. But I think it's a drain because yeah. I was over there yesterday. Like, Stinks like an old oh. asshole. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, let's talk about. Uh, I'm going to put all the food in the drain. I'm looking at him to my left over here. Put all, oh. I, don't, I don't cook in this fucking place. You were the only one that ever did, so it's uh, so yeah, sick. Because nobody okay. else is cleaning Eagle. it. Eagle. Eagle. Okay, let's move on. Eagle is not involved in this 
casting news Aww. here, but John Carlo Esposito, you know Yay. from Breaking Bad and upcoming uh, The Mandalorian. And, and he's Jamie. in Better Call Saul right now. And Is he's he? crushing. He's crushing it. Yes. And Jamie nice. Foxx. I know Jamie Foxx from Amazing Spider-Man 2 fame. And <laughs> now he, <laughs> he is now. Katie Holmes fame. Yeah, that's right. Now going to be rumored to be in the Batman up for roles in the Batman. Right. So many villains being rumored in this new movie. I'm hoping that it's just kind of, we talked about this earlier on Frosty Hiding and Frank and Ellis had made the point. And you kind of hope it's just like an Arkham Asylum yes. type thing to where you just see them and it kind of mm-hmm. spawns off for the next couple of movies that they're not collectively suicide squatting it. You know? Well, there was a, a rumor, and I don't know if this was like a fan forum rumor, but about ho- hopefully it's kind of like the long Halloween oh, where you, you you show a bunch, like you actually go through like most of Batman's foes. No. That would be great. Kite Man and Condiment Calendar King. Calendar Man. Yeah. Condiment, Condiment King. King. Condiment King. King. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Squatting that poisonous but, mustard. But this, I mean, John Paul <laughs> Esposito, and Jamie Fox, good for uh, good for this. I think so. I think Jamie. Who would Jamie Fox play? That I think they're they're leaning for him towards the Riddler. That's some of the rumors. That, that makes sense. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And what do you think, Giancarlo? Though? Uh, well, he did have half of his face blown off in Breaking Bad. Spoiler, spoiler. There you face. Go. So he could be Two Face. Interesting. That would be funny. A good callback. Yeah, if right. That. He comes out. He works. He his actually be a good Harvey Dent. It's one of my favorite. Slippy. One really of the good. coolest scenes back, in a TV show yeah. ever. And you go back Billy Dee Williams style. Because yeah. Billy Dillon was great. Oh, Harvey yeah. never, never got a chance to be Two Face. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I mean, John Carlo Esposito can do no wrong in my mm-hmm. I think he's great. Jamie Foxx. It just depends. Sometimes Jamie Foxx is just brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. And it's some, probably how he's directed. It's directed, and it's, I, I like him in the smaller roles, and kind of that when he's not front and center all the time, because I feel like sometimes he's too showy. Yeah. But when he's, but when he's just concentrating on doing that particular character, he shines. My my favorite role of all time is Collateral. Yeah. He's great. Mm. Now. He's he is just so. And that's t- subtle. Yeah. So Cody's just, smiling right now. Yeah. He's so great. Do you love them as one of your favorites? It's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, it's a good movie. It's one of yeah. It's one of the it's best. The audio slave moment in that movie with the coyote in the middle of the street is just Incredible. bonkers. Yeah. Did you mm-hmm. see? Did you see Ken's tweet about Collateral the other day? No. What did he? Oh, it was really funny. He said he was sitting at I don't know what bar he was sitting at, but a restaurant. And he said he, he looks over and the couple, oh, and he hears the couple, and the one couple goes, "What's the one with Joe? to Tom Cruise oh, yeah. and and Jamie Fox driving as the cab?" Ken says me to myself, collateral. <laughs> What's the one? Is it was it Top Gun? Is it uh, is it all the right? What 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 is the one? And Ken to myself, collateral. <laughs> and, and they said, well, what about this? They never got it. Ken said, just ordered my nachos. <laughs> <laughs> never said it. it was really good. Something like I've that. done We're that where I'm like, I could tell them, but, no. but yes. then I have I'll to talk them, to let people. Let them struggle. Yeah. No, let them struggle. Yeah. Yeah. I was just, I thought, it, it's. I think it's cool when you actually try to think of it and not just immediately Google. Right. So, yeah. um, I, went, I went to the driving range last night in a very similar fashion. This woman is talking to her friend, uh, and they're like, it, we saw the movie. Um, it had uh, the girl... <laughs> In it was a uh, she was in the movie with the where they were the she's help. She's an actress. She was she was the help, and now she's not in the help. Like there was two older, older <laughs> ones. Older ones. And I was like <laughs> I was like I'm thinking to myself <laughs> Jessica Chastain. I'm like yeah. Well. She's like there was dinosaurs. I was like oh Jurassic World. I was like, <laughs> Bryce, <laughs> Bryce, my mom, my mom yeah. can get close. She just hits the names wrong. Like yeah. I don't know if what's the one with Matt Damien. <laughs> yeah. What's that one? Matt, Matt Damien. Damon. Oh, it's Matt. It's Matt Damon. I don't care. I don't like his politics. We turned my parents on Netflix and Amazon and they are like obsessed with Ozark they just yeah. they're just burned through Ozark they love Bloodline I was like eh, don't, don't get to the second and third season just watch the first one so two was okay two was okay three, three was, was a train wreck yeah. uh, but they love Bosch Bosch is That's one of the most one. underrated shows it yeah, takes place in LA one 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 most, uh, I've been trying to get Titus Welliver in here to do just yeah. anything to promo Bosch He's mm-hmm. great. anything Titus Welliver aka Andrew Freed's friend uh, Andrew Freed's uh, lookalike, uh, lookalike yes, our buddy totally. Andrew Freed yeah. uh, we gotta get Andrew Freed in here they'd love to get him in here Good storyteller he is. But uh, sorry, going back to this main topic. Yeah, we got these two guys together, and I think it goes back to the fact. Oh, I I just get nervous. I love Matt Reeves. I think he's a brilliant film director. I just get nervous that they're going to do you know the the thing that Batman movies in the past have done, and that's just too many villains. Well, let me throw this at you. This is from Omega Underground. What movie do you think has had too many villains? Batman and Robin. Well, but that's that wasn't the problem of that movie. But Batman Forever. (laughs) One of the many problems. Right. I was going to say. But one of the many. Uh, But they've had the movies that sometimes when they stick any any comic book movie that sticks too many villains in because the. Amazing Spider-Man 2. Amazing right. Spider-Man. Right. Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. Spider-Man 3. It's Right, Spider-Man 3. It's just That's too true. many villains because the problem is you want to invest in the villain. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes the villains, and most of the times, the villains are even more interesting than the hero. Batman Returns. 
Yes, and if you have if you have the villains that you're because as much as I don't like that movie, I think Selena Kyle in that movie is fantastic. Perfect. And because of her and Michael arc, Keaton. Yes, Michael Keaton. Well, yeah, it's that art. It's that art. And the problem that I have with that movie is then it's the silliness with the penguin yeah. and all the crap with Christopher Walken and all that. Oh, stuff. I because love Max Shrek. I know, but it's just that that there's two different movies. It's the thing that's happening with Selena Kyle and all that, that I did love, and then another side story with the stupid penguin. And do you didn't like the penguin at all? Because I I, I thought they went a little too hammy with him, but I like the fact that uh, he the was kind of in the middle. Of I, the thing. I thought the, I like the fact that he was basically a beast, it, right? I that they it. made it. They turned him into a monster, right? And so, like, when he's trying to interact with humans, he's acting like an animal. I actually thought that was a cool kind of new take. That's different from the comics, but yeah, was, but it, then they went a little bit too... Tim Burton. It, no. The movie's very they went. I actually thought they went a little bit towards the end uh, with the penguin, like Batman 66. The fucking penguins have rocket launchers on their backs walking like, around like that assholes. That was pretty funny. Oh, that was pretty sick. And if you guys watch the Wangers, <laughs> we actually did a commentary for Batman Returns, so check that out. There it Batman, is. So my problem with Batman Returns is 100% the, the penguin. Oh. It's 100%. Yeah. Uh, he's annoying. Yeah. It's an annoying... It's, it's Really not good storyline, and then it, 1989 Batman is so, so effing perfect. That's good. I, and I like Returns better, man. Really? Yeah, it's I just love weird it so though. much. Yeah, because I, I love know. Returns, Cat but Woman Batman is, will always be better. There's no there's reason to make Catman. another Catwoman. Cat, Catwoman. Michelle great. Pfeiffer's perfect. Really I 100 sexy agree. as hell. Too. Good lord. Well, that's what this uh, and also owning her sexuality. That's what I loved totally. about that, that character. That's what this is saying: is the rumored villains are Riddler, Catwoman, Firefly, and Penguin. Who's well, Firefly? Crap. I, I have no idea. Is he What's Kite he Man's buddy? Kite Man's like, Let's see. friend. He or she. I'd say I have Firefly. No idea who Firefly is. I'd say Firefly is a woman if I was to guess. Firefly um, villain. Who would you guys like to see as these uh, I thought a Firefly was as a these characters. Bug. Like what actors? I don't even know anymore. Uh, I don't know anymore because I don't know how I many defenses. Oh, God, here we go. Firefly is a pyromaniac who began as a regular off-the-streets petty criminal since his career uh, as a pyrotechnic expert. Garfield Linz. That's a very non-intimidating name no. for a villain. Hello. So, My name is Garfield Linz. Here welcome. comes Selena Kyle. Look out. Who's that? Garfield Linz. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the Garfield Linz podcast I'm where we Garfield talk about all things Linz. Jim Davis Garfield. I, I, hope he talks Gar- like, yeah. I hope he talks like, like that. I love you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I am Garfield Linz. I am Garfield Linz, and what I will be doing is... Uh, uh, setting everything on fire! Why? Because I'm mad. I, Garfield I, Eagle. My, my career as the pyrotechnic man on movies did not work, so I would light you on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Batman, here it comes. Light your mask on fire, you little fucker. Look out, I've got a blowtorch. It's going to make creme brulee and light this place on fire. Now put them on the penguins and let's get out of here. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> we turn into a, like a vi- villain back of the twins. Put up your dukes. Put up your dukes. Come on, Batman. Hey, I'm hey. going to set you on fire. Dateline. What is that? Now get me a frank hey, like, that, That's such that's a... The I know. Hey. Hey. I, I was... I always miss the the. Huh? That was really funny. Huh? <laughs> the jazz. Yeah, you tell, yeah, you tell <laughs> a joke afterwards, like you're 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 waiting for like a, a gig. It's like, oh yeah, and then the next thing it was a cracker jack. All right. See kids, look, girls can play baseball too. Look at that. That's Marla Hooch. Nice. See the way it works. Nice save there, buddy. See the way it works is the train moves, the station doesn't. Such a great line. Such a great line. I love it. John Lovett, everyone. That's what I should have been doing Subway. the whole time. Is it's fresh. If I, I that was able to do my John Lovitz, if I started as like, Dateline, this is John Lovitz. Welcome to John Lovitz. It would have been better than, well, like, hey, John, Jack, uh, whatever I did. Well, John Lovitz starts out slow and sometimes goes loud because <laughs> that's what John Lovitz does. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's the John Lovitz Show. Oh, wow. Oh. Adam McKay's HBO series finds its Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. He's doing a who series. Who is, who, had, when, who? Uh, so John C. Riley's playing Jerry Buss in cool. the movie. That's good. Which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, Adam McKay's doing, it's a it's a series. It's like yeah. a, a, a limited series. series. Huh? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Who plays people? Magic? Uh, so we got Quincy Isaiah. Isaiah? Quincy oh. Isaiah, oh. former oh. UC oh. Berkeley basketball, basketball captain. Okay. And Solomon Hughes. Have been cast. Who's Solomon Hughes? Do we know? Uh, they're, they're both unknowns. unknowns. I like yeah, that. Yeah. I like you, that. You have to with this. I like that because you you don't want to see them as the actors. You want to see them as as uh, as magic. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And Kareem. So this I can't wait for this. And you know, like Showtime the, Lakers. Oh, you like your guy. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Be awesome. That's what I grew yeah. up with too. Because I just listened to that um, the Donald Sterling Thirty for Thirty podcast that Ramona Shelburne it. did. Uh, it's five episodes with like a, a Q and A sixth episode right. about all those tapes that that girl recorded of Donald Sterling and how racist he was and all that yeah, kind of right, stuff right, right. and like the rise and fall and the, it was a very very well done podcast because I didn't know a lot of the history behind like the San Diego Clippers and then how he moved to L A and he and Jerry Buss were like good buddies. Right. Jerry Buss borrowed the money from Donald. 
Donald Sterling took by the, the Lakers. Lakers. Wow, wow. Look at that. Paid it back pretty quick, I, yeah. I assume. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, this is how out of touch I am with basketball in general because I, I mean, because the Knicks have been stinking up the joint for so long. I grew up with the Lakers, and I stopped watching like 10 years ago. I yeah. just remembered just two seconds ago that the LeBron James was on the Lakers. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like it's, it's so it's such like it was supposed to be this big thing when he came over and it's like yeah everybody's gonna win the Max Kellerman's the king of it yeah. anytime like someone big comes over he's like oh they're winning the title no oh, I was so I was wrong on that like he's wrong about everything I uh, freaking can't so stand dysfunctional him. Wrong he's wrong right about everything 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 and he pretends like he knows everything yeah um, anyway so let's you know what we can do Cody because we have we're waiting on, how's our guest looking uh, he's on his way okay yeah. so let's let's turn the phone lines on try to get some phone. Conversations going for the next 15 minutes before we go to break and get Jai in here to close out the show. Uh, so the number will be flashed up on the screen. I kind of threw it at Cody. So give him a second to flash the number up there for you guys, and you guys can call in. Yeah. And anything you want to talk yeah. about here today, let's uh, let's let's do just that. If there's questions that you want uh, us to ask Jai when you call in today, and there's something in general, because he's got this movie coming out, Semper Fi, that's in theaters and on demand October 4th, and it, it stars, obviously, Jai Courtney and Nat Wolf, and we are going to be Lady talking to Meester. Lady Meester. I Finn like her. Yeah, so there's a, lot, there's a lot of things that we're going to talk to him about, so if you guys have any questions, and we'll, of course, we're going to ask him about the Suicide Squad. He won't tell us anything, but we'll ask him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, speaking of Suicide Squad, uh-huh. or the Suicide Squad, the new one, yeah. are people, who's coming back? Do well, we know? Who, we know. Anybody's Jai. Com- Jai so Jai's definitely back. coming yeah. back. Margot Robbie's supposed to do She's coming back. Yeah, she's okay. coming back. Uh, I believe, uh, isn't Joel Kinnaman was Rick Fine? Well, I don't think he is. He is. He yeah, is he is. Back? It's been confirmed. Oh, Dave. Right. And, cool. um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dave. Well, we know <laughs> that Idris Elba is not coming back, but, but coming back. What? Shailene we'll we'll Woodley. Yeah. Probably. The Woodster? Dan Aykroyd. Oh. Dan Aykroyd. Jonathan. He Dan Aykroyd's in everything. Yeah. Dan Aykroyd plays. Uh, Dan Aykroyd shows up in the movie and goes, "We should do another Ghostbusters show. Yeah. Get out of here." <laughs> Dan Aykroyd plays uh, Catherine Reitman's dad in. Uh, Does he? Working Moms, he's but he gr- is, is not. He, gr- he only his voice. Only his voice. And, oh, that's and cool. I won't give away, but it's uh, it, it's great. Like it's a great little Ivan Reitman yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of pullback. I can't honestly, dude. I can't recommend that show. You love that enough. show. I know. I, 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 still I miss not it. Te- I got to text her. I got to remind me to text her. Yeah. I yeah. Get her on the. I'd love to talk to her about the show. All right. Hey, you're on Cloud Live. Who do we got? <laughs> Say Igla's catching up. Igla. Yes. So, hello, Igla. What do you got for us today? Uh, this is Parker. What's up, guys? What's What's up? Hey, Hi. Parker. So, uh, I'm going to keep this quick because I called in like two weeks ago and Roka thought I'd never shut up, so I'll be quick. Uh-oh. Um, Just keep talking. He's not here. Who gives a shit? Yeah, who gives a shit? He talks too yeah, much. It's fine. Um, sure. <laughs> um, so, one of my favorite movies of the year is The Farewell. Yes. Mm-hmm. A24's movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I think A24, they've just been mm-hmm. like making some of the best movies in like the last five years. So, yes. I'd love to hear what your guys' favorites are. For, uh, their this specific? Year, of A24. Oh, A24. Uh, I mean, I, I have to bring I, up a list. The first thing I think of is I'm look, really looking forward the to The Lighthouse. The but, Lighthouse. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I love The Witch. I was going The Witch. Yeah. yeah. The first time the I best. saw it, I was like, oh, this wasn't scary. But the way it was filmed oh, I mean, is just Moonlight, stunning. Moonlight is a, is really is a great one. Let's see. So this is this is their filmography. Less of A24. Zoom, zoom in a little bit because I got shit eyes. Okay, up to the top there. Ex Machina. All right, let's yeah. see. I'll tell you which ones I like. Uh, I I enjoyed the Bling Ring. Love Spring Breakers. Spring Breakers I know that's is a great. Spectacular now is probably up there for me. Okay. Enemy I'm a big fan of. Locke. Locke's probably up there Locke for me. Is great. Locke is great. Uh, Tusk is, is, is a... Cr- you, God, McCook, you'd hate that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Room. Room's Room is great. great. Room, yeah. Ex, Machina Ex Machina is amazing. Yeah, so Ex, yeah. Yeah, looking at all those, I'd probably There's have to look in the witch. Ex Machina is, is my number one. Yeah. Green Room is fantastic. Oh, oh, good too. oh. Green Room. Over, That's over Ex Machina? Uh, uh, wow. Over Ex Machina, over mm-hmm. Witch, yeah. Green Room is insane. It's such a great movie. Oh. Yeah, a lot of great Sir movies, Patrick man. Stewart. They a lot of great movies. They, did they do Peter They don't Falcon? make bad movies, I don't think. Ooh, a ghost story. That's an underrated okay. movie. I mean, Telling it was. I think it was nominated, oh, but it's been tested. Disaster Project. artist. Oh no, the disaster artist. Lady Bird. Yeah. I love the disaster. Lady Bird. Hereditary. Great. Oh, some good ones. I don't know. That's a do they great make question. bad movies? Great question. I didn't like it. Comes at night. I don't think great I question. saw that. Um, McCook, can you, can you read this? Five. I can't. Yeah. Midsummer, obviously. I need McCook. I don't. I, I, what does that say? Igla. Okay, good. <laughs> Trina, what yeah, does that say on the bottom? Uh, Igla. And M- Mark, what does that say? Igla. Thank you so much. All right, thank you for the phone call. Parker. But yes, uh, if Thanks, you guys buddy. haven't seen The Farewell or Midsummer, Mid- can we yeah, bring mid-90s. people from The Farewell to interview? I want to, to see The Farewell oh, I love real it. bad. Mid-90s it's, is another one, too. Do you guys know what it is? Do you guys know what it's about? 
the farewell at all? Mm-hmm. It's about oh, like it's yeah. a Chinese tradition that they don't yeah. tell the family that the woman the, the woman is dying to right. the woman yeah, yeah, who's yeah. dying. Right, right, which I think is such an interesting yeah. cultural yeah. difference because here you would get sued if you don't totally. get your you know cancer well, screening uh, results or whatever. So it's it's a really fascinating story. I would love to talk to them about and it. And we have this, the who the movie was about the the last black man in San Francisco. That we uh, had the, right, we had him mm-hmm. in here too. So they, they they've done some great. They really have great stuff. So wait, they uh, didn't make finish. the lighthouse. Uh, is the lighthouse this new one that's coming out with Pat? Oh, there you go, Defoe? upcoming. That's that. Okay, so they did. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna uh, the death of Dick Long. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get let's get the that's next. That's my question. husband's hey, biopic. You're on you're on colli- <laughs> it, Why? <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Hey, you want to go collide alive? You're on. Who's this? Get it. Oh, cool. Uh, hey, this is uh, Tony from Kentucky. Hello, Tony. Uh, Hi, Tony. Tony, hey, you somebody. sound like you're from Jersey. You don't sound like you're from. Oh, Kentucky. Tony. Sorry, I've got a little uh, voice thing going on right now. Oh, it's yeah. all good, man. Wait, so, so uh, you're you're definitely not from Kentucky. You you may live no, there. No, I swear. You wait, no, wait. I was born and raised here. Get what are you what are yeah. you watching Goodfellas every day? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, my mom's from up north. So okay. I kind of like adopt adopted her. Yeah. Patterns, but yeah, I'm from here. I mean, because I deal I deal with Snelling every day, and even via text you can hear it. <laughs> Dude. It's like Dude, you get so you get that teaser I sent. <laughs> He lives in like northern Kentucky compared oh, okay. to me, and every time I hear him, I'm like, man, that dude sounds so. Scary. Yeah, no, you sound like you sound like you should be in Brooklyn with me getting some pizza. Oh, all right. Trust what's me, the... I wish I was. All right, yeah. Okay, yeah, you like Saul Junior. So, all right, uh, what do you got for us? Yeah. <laughs> so first off, I gotta say, um, when you guys were talking about uh, action scores, nobody brought up Raiders. Oh, uh, to me, yeah, that's, that's action adventure. I don't. Greatest... Yeah, I mean. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we're going more I, like the the straight think. action movies. Yeah, I was I was yeah, looking yeah. I was looking more like Van Damme, Seagal, like that yeah. that type, like really hardcore action movies where that's like you know, that's more like adventure. And I'm sure we're still forgetting some yeah, great sure, ones. Totally, it was on on yeah. the spot. But yeah, I mean, I, I, you, Raiders one of my is in my top ten films of the year, and that that score. I think the other day I brought up what my favorite score. Yeah, was, Indiana and, Jones and is one that. of the best yeah. themes ever. Yeah, so that that's, that was kind of like left off the uh, left off the table. You would love this, okay, I, I, Dave. I just want to make sure. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> okay. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. The call. <laughs> um, David W. Collins, the soundtrack show. Have you listened to this? No, he, you keep telling me about he this. He just did you just four, four, <laughs> four like episodes on Raiders of the Lost Ark music. Yeah, he right. breaks four? it down. Four. Just everything. It just deep dive into story. Right. Everything. It, it's so good. It's one of the best it's uh, podcasts the out there. It's probably the only podcast I would listen to. I just listen to music it. all the time. It's hard for me to switch he to does talking. With, he does it with Star Wars, Jurassic Park, Back to the Future. He does right. all the, the, the big I, scores. I listened to, started listening to this podcast called Helen Gone. It's about uh, cold cases in Arkansas. It's pretty interesting. Will you tell me what this says? Eek la. That's uh, Eek la. Orlando. <laughs> Is it all? Oh, that's brutal. Yeah, that's brutal. That's tough. That sounds that's, like a cat dying yeah, in an alley. My, my apologies to the, to the audience. Are you trying listeners. to go full Mexican soccer announcer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be Got my it. dream and, job. And that's not why Aww. you think it's because you're Mexican. Okay, yes. what's what's next? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're on Collider Live. Who is? Hi, it's Krista from Rochester, Minnesota. Hello, Hi. Krista. Hello, Krista. Hello, Krista. How are I you? Can't what do you got for? I got through. Yay. All right, you did. Krista. Cody's, Cody's Krista. about to hang up, so hurry up. <laughs> First, I was going to just say I could not relate to Mark more than when he was talking about being quiet when all of you were, you know, big, loud personalities. Mm-hmm. I was like, that is 100 percent me. Are you oh, in the room with us, too? We just haven't noticed in the last couple <laughs> years. Yeah, I could be. I'd okay. just be in the corner. Right. Uh, my question, though, is for Josh. Oh. My husband and I watched Rocket Man this weekend. Fantastic. Yes. So good. I believe you had said that you enjoyed the movie, but it is so not like you with musicals. So we were just kind of wondering, you know, why you why you liked it. Can it's I a, guess? It's a very good question, and a Christian would like to guess. I'm just going to guess, and I'm going to say because it's Elton John music. Mm-hmm. Correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I love Elton John music, and I will say this, too. Uh, it doesn't like there's no I mean I know that it like pops into song and dance but it sort of like has to do with the plot a little bit and yeah. it moves it along yeah. and it's like real Elton John performances I think like the brilliant way they did it almost like a Moulin Rouge which yeah. I actually kind of exactly. appreciate that movie yeah. when did you talk about um, this one I, I must have been out when you were talking I think, about it well, yeah. I don't think you were out I think because we, we were talking asleep. about how much he I love Elton 
paying rock attention. Band, yeah. uh, is that like the, the the actual stuff in between the music was so well done that you forgot, and then you listen to Elton John music. There is no other musician on the planet. I mean, there are a few, but there like Elton John's music is so perfect yeah. for something like that. Do you know who's great in that movie, by the way? That's got no buzz whatsoever. Richard he, Madden. No. He was good in it, but uh, uh, what's his face? Um, John Cena. Not John Cena. And I said it the other day. Tatum, uh, what's his fuck? Fuck. I had his name the other day. Are you day. talking about Taron? Like the, the actual actor? The guy that actor? plays Bernie Toppin? <sighs> yeah, no. I'll oh, come back. Uh, Billy Elliot guy. I, I got to come back to Jay, it. Uh, I said it the other day, and I had it on. So he was Jamie in, Bell? Not Jamie Bell. Bring no. up the cast list. My head's right. so broken. It's, it's not stupid. Billy Elliot? No. He's always good and stuff, but no, that's my whole point. I hey. forgot his damn name, and he's so good in the damn movie. Uh, ah, where is he? Oh, there he is. Uh, Tate Donovan. Tate, uh, Tate uh, is the guy from the Troubadour. He's amazing. Uh, in that yeah. Movie. Yeah, 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 he's really good in that. You're right. Great. I right. love the, I love Rocket Man. It's fantastic. It's so great. It's really good. It's underrated. Really good. It's one of my I favorites agree. of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Taron sure. I think Taron is yeah. was amazing. He, he should be nominated and he won't be because it came out too Completely too early. agree. Is yeah. uh, are you still on the phone right now? Rochester, Minnesota? Yes, I am. So are you a big Vikings fan? Uh, no. Well, uh, my husband's a Packers fan. Well, Bears fan. I don't know why I just said Bears fan. Yuck. Yeah. Um, but well, Bears fan. Well, my brother lived in. I've been through <laughs> Rochester. My brother lived in Minneapolis for a while. It's, I mean, it's an amazing part of the country. You guys live in uh, an awesome, awesome part of this country. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for the call, Minnesota, and thank you everybody Chris who called Tom. in. Uh, we are we ready to go here, Riley? Um, check in right now. All right, well, listen. Me, uh, Here, here's what we're going to uh, Don't worry about it. We're yeah. going to go to break. Right. We go to break. We're going to either come back with a guest or we're not. <laughs> See you in a little bit. <laughs> Quick there, okay. Whatever. Nobody respects me here, guys. I'm so alone. Hey guys, it's Perry here to let you know that Movie Talk is moving. We've had a great time in this 3 p.m. Pacific slot, but guess what? We want you to start your day with Collider Movie Talk, so we're moving. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to get a longer show with some brand new segments. So tune in starting Monday, September 16th, 9 a.m. Pacific. See you there. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Time. Well, you know, if you've been watching us every week, you know we break down the latest and the greatest in the world of sports, talk about the big issues, the big games, all of it with a rotating band of guests like Matt Nose and Josh McCuga. We've had Taylor Bashotti on. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember to subscribe to Collider Sports YouTube channel for all the sports goodness. Hey guys, it's Riley here. Let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. You know it, right? It drops every Thursday on Collider Conversations. And I have guests from all across the space. John Roca, Gray Drake, Alexander Desplat came on at one point. We talk everything from movies, we talk about life, and everything in between. What do you want to hear? What do you want to talk about? It's the Riley Roundtable every Thursday on Collider Conversations. You get it there. Hi, I'm Koi Jandro, host of Collider Heroes, and I'm here to tell you we've got 20-minute episodes coming at you on Collider Video, on the YouTube, as you've always loved it. Plus, now we've got hour-long podcasts dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, every week we're going to try to get some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows you love. So, video, podcast, interviews all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. Well, hello there. I'm Ken Napsok, one of the hosts of Collider Jedi Council, and I'd like to invite you to listen to our show, watch our show. It's on every Thursdays on the Collider video channel, and it's also available in podcast form if you'd like to listen to our sweet voices. On Collider Jedi Council, me, Christian Harloff, and a bevy of guests, I say, talk Star Wars. We celebrate Star Wars. We dig into the Star Wars news. We speculate everything about Star Wars including your questions. So join us on Collider Jedi Council. You're going to have a great time. What's up, Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com, where you can find the top stories throughout the week in the world of professional wrestling. If you're a wrestling fan like myself, then you'll be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself, where we pick apart and, and talk about every little thing that happened on the Blue Brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet.
Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Rule of Two is that show. It drops on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. A new episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well, every Saturday and Sunday. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm Christian Harloff. I'm the host of Collider Jedi Council. We talk about everything Star Wars. It's movie news, it's canon, it's all of it. We take questions from you guys. How do you do it? Main channel, that's right, right here. Subscribe to this channel. But if you want to just listen to it, you got the podcast feed too. Apple Podcasts, you can listen to it in your car. Do all of it. It's Star Wars, episode nine's coming out. And then after episode nine, you got TV shows. So we're going to be your sports center for Star Wars. Do it. Come on, be real. Hi, I'm Amy Dallin, one of the hosts of Collider Heroes. And starting right now, you can catch our show Tuesday nights with a new Collider Heroes and a longer Collider Heroes podcast where Koi and I are going to talk your ears off. You already know that's coming. So make sure to go to YouTube, subscribe, and find us on the Collider Heroes podcast feed for all of that sweaty goodness. The Witching Hour is all over Collider right now. You can listen to that horror film podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about witchiness. We talk about slashers. We talk about space horror. You name it. All on that show on the Collider Factory feed. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out. Get scared. Hopefully you survive the Witching Hour. back and we're running through an alley i just dropped my apple it's got poop on it what's up everybody welcome back to collider live as we get back to uh the show we are waiting to see if our guest here today uh sometimes you know burbank traffic and la traffic and jail stoinks but we're, we're gonna try to get jai courtney in it's here bad. it's not but good mate in the meantime we do have mark riley's ghost yeah mark how are you nice to see you uh, i'm doing fantastic <laughs> and that mark riley just spoke more than a real mark oh yeah um, hey guys where's rodney <laughs> um listen <laughs> yeah, so cody i'm thinking maybe we just keep the phone lines on does that work for you is that too sure, much give me a second here. all right yeah just keep the phone lines on and we'll we'll keep you guys going until jai gets in or he doesn't so how about that yeah, like that? It's a, the suspense. It's like a, it's a, yeah. you know, it's a thrilling I hang, show. I hang around with you, you kind of make me angry, and it's not intentional. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not, why, it's not why intentional. Why are you angry now? Yeah. What are you angry I about? I just don't understand why you like Roma so much. I just <laughs> don't <laughs> Why did you just think of Roma? Because I'm Mexican? Yes, you like that well, Mexican no, movie. Yes. <laughs> but also because... You, like, it's when, not like I'm obsessed do- with it. I just thought it was a good bark? movie last year. You, no, it's not like one of my favorite movies or you, anything. You, you, were pretty, you were pretty... You were oh, pretty, you were, I was going to say... But oh, no, no. I, the only reason I was defending it is because you he, didn't really watch it. His his Because you sit, you sat there and you're like, why is a dog barking? I'm like, because that's our life. Okay? We didn't grow up in this beautiful... like. I lived in a place with dogs it was barked stupid. too. <laughs> so then why did it bother so much? Because that was the culture. Popping. That's the culture. All right, thank you, Cody, so the much. dog barking is part of your culture. Hey, you're on Roma Live. Who do we got? On the roof. Uh, hello, it's Kyle Hudson from Cypress, Texas. Hello, hello Kyle, Kyle Hudson. What's going on, Kyle? What do you got for us today? See, Kyle sounds like he's from Texas. Yeah, he does, a little yeah. bit. Kyle, what do you got for us today? Uh, well, I have seen the greatest movie of all time. Mm-hmm. What's that? It is Network, 1976. Oh, yeah, it's a great mm. movie. Is that the first time you ever wow. saw it? Yeah. Yeah, it's and, a great movie. And my, uh, I guess, exaggeratory line about it, this is totally BS. <laughs> I, it's not really true, and I know it's not true because I've seen The Godfather. Right. But I, I, I've been saying, trying to get my friends to watch a movie, that it makes The Godfather look like a student film. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Really wow. loving Network. Mm-hmm. That's a very well-loved movie. It's a good movie. I, yeah. I loved it enough to say that 
not really to believe it, but <laughs> yeah, it is the greatest film I've ever seen. Oh, at least right. you, at least you can Thank admit. You for the call. At least mm. you can admit that you are uh, exaggeration. Yeah. Exaggeration. Yeah. Hyperbole. That is kind of cool though that you see a movie that from back in the day for the first time. Kick like Dor- like Dorian is like I guess he just saw the movies leading up to well, Joker. He's a big Scorsese fan. Yeah, so now he's freaking out about all his movies. So he that's, still hasn't that's seen great. a lot of movies that I keep telling. Him no, but, but I, mean, I think since working here, he's seen a lot more than he, he had. Before. Yeah. I didn't I, see I Back to the Future. Well, that was one of the things I always said to give Dorian. Dorian was a you know was a college level basketball player. Yeah, you he got played, a little eye booger but there. He was, but he just he would play like you know it's hard you know when you're putting that much dedication to it to go camp out and watch all these movies yeah. too. But he's catching up on him now and he's seen. Yeah. A lot of I tried to be a Division one athlete. <sighs> that Didn't was work out. Too, too it's well. just too many hours swimming. I, yeah, I could have competed. It's yeah. just you too many swimmer? hours. Yeah, I mean, I got recruited to swim at Can you teach college. me? I don't know how to swim properly. You, are Is you that true? Me? Yeah, why, we, why? I grew up in the desert. Well, what happens? You get scared when th- someone throws you in the water? No, I just, oh. I mean, I'm, I can float like a dog. You can float like, like a dog. Like dog. But you, can't you can't, like, swim. actually you can't do the swim. Yeah, exactly. Cars. Yes, I'll, I'll yeah. gladly teach right. you how to swim. Okay, cool. Hey, you're on Collider Swimming. Who do we got? <laughs> This is Matt from Koreatown again. Oh, Hi, Matt. Matt, what do you man, got for us today? How do you today? keep getting in, Matt? You're a legend. Well, Koreatown, so that's going to be an easy. It's going to be an easy uh, drive for you to get to the Shmoo Spectacular on December seventh. Oh, I'm Down. definitely going to be there. I've awesome. made all of the LA events except for one because I was out of town. Well, this one you can't miss. This one. It's going to be five. Not going to. Five big matches, four titles on the line, December seventh. Going to be downtown LA. Matt, I have a question for you. On a scale of one to ten, how upset are you going to be that I'm not at the spectacular? Scale of one to ten. Uh, uh, definitely an eight. Okay, oh, eight. So that's, that's, that's that's good. 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 Who's your who, who's your who's your favorite competitor? Who do you want to see? Who do you hope competes at uh, the spectacular? Um, I mean, I like the classics. I like Dan Merle. I like John Roca. Yeah. it would have been cool to see the Wild Berries. Yeah, um, thanks, man. Rachel Cushing's gone, and Clark Wolf is gone. So yeah. that, I, I don't get new stars that, come. I saw them a couple times. So. New stars coming up the the corner here too, and you know Paul Yam will be defending that. Title. New stars coming up the corner, huh? Coming up the corner, <laughs> coming around the corner, coming, coming around, around the corner. It um, made sense to me. And yeah. <laughs> shut up and go off the road. I suck at prepositions, yeah. so uh, there you go. Yeah, and swimming. So hey, uh, <laughs> what's your your question for us today downtown? I have I have two questions. One's quick. It's just that did you know that Thrawn has a new song mm. that uh, he posted on about show? us? I've, yeah, no. Party at the Fart Tower. Oh, all right. Oh. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll go. We'll go and go check it out. That's, that's the first one. Yeah. We're going to watch Thrawn's. Uh, Cody, can really you bring quick, that up? But it's, it's amazingly catchy. You yeah. know. And the second one, you guys have already stumbled on it. It's a question I've been trying to work up to. Who out of these three composers, which have like compromised our '80s love of music, would you think is the best? Jerry Goldsmith, mm-hmm. James Horner, or Alan Silvestri? Mm. Ooh, My personal favorite is James Horner. Just because I was a kid in the '80s and all those Don Bluth movies, like it just it, she just wrote beautiful scores for those movies. I would have. I mean, are we are we including? Are we saying just from that time period? Or we're saying everything that they've done. Yeah, I, obviously, James uh, Horner's past. You know, Alan Silvestri overall, Avengers and all that that's stuff. what I mean. But okay. Like, if you look at them, they composed a good chunk of the yes. that we all. Love. And Jerry Goldsmith has a lot of underrated mm-hmm. stuff that people don't talk about. He's including great stuff. Gremlins. Good stuff. He um, did Alien. He did. He did, Commando. He did a lot. Uh, yes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's James Horner. That's Horner. Uh, yeah, Horner yeah, yeah. did that. But either Commando way, Commando has but a good soundtrack. It does. Yeah, either way, I'm going to go with Alan Silvestri because Alan Silvestri, for a long time. To me, had a I mean, Back to the Future. He did all these things. One of the best themes ever. He made. did. Predator. He did Predator. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, but during that time period. But then he switched up, and he's done a lot of different things. You can still hear a lot of his tone. But he's, I, to me, James Horner, and I love James Horner. James, mm-hmm. I mean, shit, Braveheart's my one of my favorite of all time scores. That's actually one of my. I'm like, oh, it's fine. Like, I, like an American Tale at Casper. There's all me. these beautiful family movie scores okay. that he did that are just gorgeous. But if you listen to it enough, you can hear a lot of the. Oh, that's James Horner. Oh, that's James Horner. That's James Horner. Uh, Sylvester, I think, throws you off a bit. And Let me. Throw some stuff. I, I think Sebastian. Well, I mean, probably if you look at like three. Forrest Gump, it's obviously very different than Back yeah. to the Future, Who gets right? Forrest Gump. Alan Sebastian. Sebastian. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Good one. I mean, yeah. Makuga, do you know uh, what Alan Silvestri did back in the day? He did Young Guns too. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yes, right on. See, and like Predator. Oh, and Predator. See, like for me, I don't like. I, I mean, obviously, I, I know the scores and I know the songs. You know, when I hear them, I just don't know the composers, and that's you know right. a short sight on me. I'm not great with directors either, yeah. but. Well, um, I think that like when I hear a score, especially in the '80s and stuff like that, those those scores like set the tone yeah. for everything. But whoever we listened to, and, I, and we brought it up, who who did the who composed the theme, the Delta Force? Was it Horner or was it or was it Jerry Goldsmith? I don't know. Was it one of the I two? Hold on. Yeah. Do you, do you know what year Delta Force was? I think it was '85. Uh, we're bringing out Delta Force right. score. Is it Delta Force score. Who did that? Uh, we don't know yet. <laughs> Composer. Composer. Let's see. Cody's looking for it. Cody's, yeah, it's not Goldsmith weird. is 
Oh, it is, uh, it is Alan Silvestri. Silvestri, yeah, so, yeah okay. Yeah. So now Silvestri definitely wins. Oh. Oh. Ladies hey. and gentlemen, thank you for your phone call, my man, but i got to cut you off because joining us in studio, What's ladies up, and brother? gentlemen, How are you, <laughs> he is once again, he's back. <laughs> Shy <laughs> Courtney is back, ladies and gentlemen, and he oh, yeah. is ready, pumped, and we're going to talk to him right now. Semper Fi comes out, ladies oh, and gentlemen. It's uh, it's in theaters and on demand. October fourth of this year, he's returning. He is back. Johnny, what's going on? What man? are we live? We're live, <laughs> man. Is that why? Fuck. I'm sitting out there having a cup of coffee. And I'm like, get in, like, get in there, get in there. Oh, I'm required. Yeah, <laughs> fucking huge. What do you do? You, 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 what? <laughs> yeah, what up. Is this for the, is this this is for the other one that you can't talk about? They're all ones I They're can't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like fucking 20 pounds. I don't know. Bigger. I just got in for, for Europe uh, yeah. yesterday. I think most of this is pizza, to be honest, because <laughs> yeah. I've been eating a bit of that. But um, we're where in Italy? In? But where? Well, I did. I was in Italy for a second. I just finished a movie called Jolt. Okay. Uh, we were shooting in uh, Sofia, Bulgaria. Nice. Okay. Wow. London before that. Um, Damn. But... Uh, you know, when you're on European time, it's just like just move. time to carbo load. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> tends to just be what happens. Yeah. I don't blame you. So we just have to eat pizza to look like you. That's the secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it ain't working because I was in New York and I look like my dad. Um, all right, let's uh, let's let's talk about the movie, man. So we got we, Semper Fi and October Fourth. I mean, you, like yeah. I said, you're always you're always working. Tell me about this one. Simplify, yeah. I mean, look, it's a, a, a great little independent film we yeah. made. Lionsgate jumped on board, which is awesome for the release. And um, but uh, it, it centers around five best friends who are uh, marine reservists, uh, and kind of the events that surround uh, their first deployment. You know, that's what was going on in like oh five oh six. Everyone yeah. was kind of getting shipped out, and uh, uh, these are small town guys. And and some shit takes place that uh, really kind of uh, reshapes their relationship and and forces them to kind of really question uh what it means to be uh to be loyal to each other and to themselves and um yeah yeah i i i love the movie i really did like the the end scene i'm not going to give anything away but you know there's it's an action-packed last 20 it kind of gets kind of gets a little crazy it does yeah. it's awesome now i saw on the bus when it flips I'm not, I'm not that, that was in Pittsburgh. So you guys shot some of this in Pittsburgh. We I'm shot guessing. no. Where we shoot? We shot in uh, New Orleans. Oh, okay. Oh, I was there supposed you to go. Go. See, I saw See? Pittsburgh, Pizza. Pennsylvania on the no, bus. No, no. I was like, dude, this, this is my hometown. This is the crazy shit. Why? Because yeah. you saw because of the the bridge. Well, you know, the, on the bus it said Pittsburgh, oh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. but that's you know, that's the, the magic of cinema, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. No way. I see Pittsburgh, and I and I immediately think it's in Pittsburgh. It's where. There's yeah. bridges. He's like, like right. the sun was. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I see a local bar where yeah. he's getting in fights. I'm like, that's my hometown. The guy like, that's called yeah, art no. department. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, Darina, you also I mean, you, you you came in here today too. You were pretty you were pretty pumped about it. Yeah, no, I I uh, saw. I didn't. I couldn't finish it because time. But yeah. I really like what I saw. I can't wait. And now you're telling me that it ended awesome. It's but, fantastic. But yeah, so yeah. I, I was curious. Now that you actually, you know, your you, your career man. Now you can kind of choose what movies you want to make. Why did you choose this role? Uh, this was really about, um, I guess, uh, well, look, I mean, I, I just, I really connected with the relationships, which is really the hero of the story, right. I think. I think the, the brotherhood that kind of exists between these characters is um, is really what's at the center of it. And uh, and that's something that, uh, I don't know, it's really important to me. I'm, I'm, I'm lucky to call my best friends in the world, like guys that are t I've known for 20 years, like my mates yeah. from school. Um, and we have one of those kind of thicker than blood, thicker than water, the whole deal, like uh, relationships. Um, and I guess, you know, I've always been, uh, I've always connected with stories around, you know, uh, like servicemen and women. And I feel like that's a world where, uh, that I, a space I kind of like to work in. And, and this Henry uh, Alex Rubin, who directed this film, yeah. this is very much his love letter to to that sense of loyalty, which mm -hmm. is is you know one we see within uh, the armed forces as kind of um, an untouchable uh, uh, thing. And so I think he he really wanted to kind of put that up on screen. And and I just found I really connected with the the relationships there. And and um, and with this character, you know, with someone who's conflicted, who's sort of seems to have a pretty true north moral compass, but. Um, through events that take place uh, during his deployment, it really rocks his um, sense of what that all means, and 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 his idea of kind of what where his loyalties need to lie, and and where our like human imperfections um, 
can sit with us, you know? I mean, you can tell by your amazing performance because you were great in, in, in what I saw. Thank you. Uh, I have a stupid question, though, because the tattoo in the back, is yeah. that is that was that yours or no? No, it's not Okay, really I was going to say, because yeah. that was a crazy tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to part big one. <laughs> yeah. I said Pittsburgh on the back? Yeah. But you had tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yeah, it's like Pittsburgh uh, on the back. Uh, but look, so tell me about some, working with some of these guys. Like you said, yeah. it's, all, it's all about the chemistry of it and, and the believability yeah. that you guys have been tied for a long time. Did you work with any of these guys beforehand, first time I had them? worked with Finn, Finn Whitrock, okay. uh, on Unbroken. Oh, right, 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 right. Yes, Finn was in Unbroken. Yep. Uh, and I love, I mean, that's such a cool thing, you know. It was so, we, I think we really appreciate that within each other because, um, you know, when you get to work with an ensemble cast, it's not always the case that the chemistry is always there. I mean, it's just the realities of, like, the, you know, what we do for a living. And, right. Um, it was cool that, like, five years later, I mean, Finn and I are mates anyway. We right. got really close on Unbroken. And then to kind of come full circle and be talking about jumping on the same project was really dope. And then we went and did it and, and were, you know, fueled and helped along by uh, the additions of uh, Bo Knapp and yep. Arturo Castro, Nat Wolf. We kind of make up this group of guys um, who have, uh, who've, you know, known each other forever. And that's not an easy thing to establish. The reality of it was, dude, we, like, we would have loved to have six months together right. drinking in bars and like you know getting to know each other's families and it right. wasn't the, wasn't the case the film you know it was it's quite a low budget movie and just the scrappy nature of trying to pull it together and scheduling and stuff we only all got together I want to say on like the Saturday and we were like rolling cameras on the Tuesday wow and what do you do that before you just go get some beers hang you out get drunk yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean. yeah. yeah you kind of have to right? you yeah. go out you get drunk yeah. and uh, you know you just kind of get I mean look it was helped we were in a town like New Orleans where yeah. you know the bus it's a requirement when you get off the bus all day yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we just had to make use of that first 48 hours as, as, right. as best we could yeah, yeah. And, but uh, you take that in with you to, to filming once that happens totally. you take those days and you know oh, I was just shooting the shit with this guy and it's so much more relaxing yeah. and so much of this movie is us like just shooting the shit right. or like you know the the script really became it's a great script uh, Sean Mullen Henry uh, put this thing together but you know it, it did in a way become the blueprint particularly just on a dialogue kind of level um, a lot of it is just born out of I don't know who we all were kind of arriving with naturally and, and how those relationships kind of built and right in a lot of these movies, the lead is usually the dude that has like the serious love interest, but really it was, you know, it was Finn's, Finn's character, character Yeager, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you pushing for a love interest in there at all? <laughs> I mean, it was like the love between you and your brother, but, you know. No, usually... yeah, I know. No, no, no. I think it was good. I think it was, I think the temperature was all right on that. Uh, w one of the struggles with, with playing Cal, I think, which was interesting, it was something Henry and I butted heads over sometimes was kind of how. You know, I I would I would I would I was resistant so much to let him be the kind of like the sensible one in the group. Yeah, probably because I'm a fucking shit bag. And, <laughs> like, Why you say that? And and like, <laughs> it just felt natural to kind of want to want to want to bring. Well, just be a bit more. I don't know. And and that was something that was because there was so much like organic energy that we were bringing in. Yeah, and kind of like just feeling these guys. Um, and like almost like paring back any of the kind of acting required, you know, it was one of those movies where it all just had to sort of feel real and immediate. Um, sometimes there'd be sort of stuff that would be born out of how the group were enjoying each other's company, right. and Henry would kind of have to like put the reins on me a little and be like, "Yeah, he can't be, you know," because I would want to let a little more of that kind of flow. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it was fine. It was just like it was it was a uh, it was an interesting thing. It was a bit of a challenge for me, a struggle for me, and we kind of met in a in a place that i feel like you know it needed to sit uh and and a lot of that you know i had to roll some of that over because henry's right i mean that's where cal kind of needs to reside for this group hmm. um you know he's got to be the kind of one that i mean he's the cop right in yeah. the day and it's like he's not he's he's pulled himself out of the depths of kind of was a fuck up once upon a time and now he's got this kid brother who like <clears throat> just can't make his life work and and uh, a lot of that has had to be kind of about making a choice to really structure things and, and, and um, I don't know, create a sense of uh, foundation around mm -hmm. themselves. So, Well, the movie, once again, everybody, is Semper Fi. It is in theaters uh, and on demand. October 4, 2019, we're talking to the star of that film, Jai Courtney. Look, you got other stuff coming out on the Pike stuff. A lot of stuff you can't talk about, but my job to ask you about it anyway. Um, you got you got the Suicide Squad. You yeah, that's to, coming up. That's coming up. Mm. Are you guys going to be shooting that thing? 
pretty soon. I'm about to roll out on uh, Sunday. About Sunday. Okay, mm. cool. So what? Yeah. What? Because last time it was so it was Toll Show. You couldn't even tell us you were in the movie at that point. Now could I not? Not the point. Not last time you came in. But now, now we all know, and now this happened. But what's what? As far as going there, can you tell us where you're going? Uh, Atlanta. You going? Oh, that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. They shoot a lot of that stuff. <laughs> I shoot a lot of yeah. stuff down there. Yeah, like that makes that. sense. Yeah. So, all right, uh, and James Gunn, you've been t- talking. I mean, obviously, last time we spoke, you did say you have a couple of conversations with him too. And uh, any difference in tone this one from the from the last movie? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be totally different. I mean, yeah. look, I guess I don't know. It's hard to sort of say. I yeah, mean, I don't want you to get in trouble, but say what you can. Say. I don't. There's not a lot. Like, I mean. <sighs> I don't honestly know what I can say that really. Let, of course, it's going to be different in tone. It's all you know. It's got James Gunn stuff all right. over it. It's um, you know, we're going to meet some new people, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Are you allowed to show your more of your shit bag self? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to shoving that gold tooth back in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mind you, I fucking don't know what I'm going to do about the mutton chops. The chops. We'll, we'll see. I just came off a job. Art department, bro. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I, yeah. Right? yeah. I don't want to wear a fake beard, though. No. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. they'll see you. Yeah. How long does it take you to grow it in? A couple of days. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right. <laughs> but by the time you get off the plane. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. The other night we were like, I just wrapped on this thing and, and I, 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 I hadn't shot for a few days and I was kind of getting a good scruff going. Yeah. And then I realized I had to shave and I was like, damn. And I was like, fuck, I'm, I'm actually going to be in trouble here with pulling. S- I'll pull something together. Yeah, yeah. No, I would be right. Well, you can like basically have fake for a, f- a bit and then like mold it into oh, the real God. shit. Right? Yeah, that's what I'll do. See, that Henry Cavill should have talked to you. I was gonna say, that. yeah, CG yeah. mustache. Yeah, yeah. CG yeah. mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Must- don't do that. Well, that's <laughs> what? You know, that- dude, yeah, they CG his whole On face Justice because, League. because in Justice League he had to uh, Mission Impossible. Paramount wouldn't let him take the mustache off. Oh, so shit. and they didn't want. So and it's so noticeable. It looks it looks horrendous. Wow, it didn't look good. I didn't realize that. I've actually wear a fake one before and it wasn't fun. Yeah, and it's like it's okay, but it's like. Glued, you know, I couldn't yeah. grow it in time for this thing. Right. And so it's, you know, it's glued on and it changes the way your your face works, right. you know. And, uh, yeah, it's all good. Is we, there, can you talk about at all, like, if you're excited to work with somebody other than the director? On Squad? Yeah. You guys just love talking about Squad. It's all. <laughs> well, that's our audience. I know. I'm going to I'm move. I'm going to move. I just hate to be next the one. guy that's like, eh, there's nothing I can say. Yeah, I know. No, no, you know, no if you can't say anything. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. It's going to be great. You know, and like, you know. There's a bunch of us come back, and that's it. Can you talk? Yeah. Well, this is something you can't talk about. Quick question, because I love with Hot American Summer. Can you talk about your experience doing that? Yeah, that was crazy. That was fun. It was uh, it was pretty quick, uh-huh. but uh, it was great. I yeah. mean, it was kind of that was like a weird little like, whoa, here we are doing this shit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> with all these like comedy like yeah, geniuses. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just a lot of fun and kind of bonkers. I didn't know anything about the original. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen that. Uh, the first one. The first one was a prequel or a yeah. sequel. Or, and I was like, I fucking didn't know what I was in for. Yeah. And uh, I remember I called my friend and I was like, it's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And he was like, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, point. is that the point? And he was like, yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Does it make- I just like, was like, let me like, get into this before I can like say I'm going to oh. show up. And I was Lunacy. like, I totally missed the yeah. Yeah, anyway. So have you watched the movie? And yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Of course. Does, yeah, it, make yeah. You, does yeah. it make you want to do more comedy? Would love to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do yeah. you, what you, because even hearing you travel and going out, drinking with your buddies and, and just, you know, over just, just going through Europe and, and enjoying food. What, what's your thing that you do that you like to just go out? Besides just, you know, watching movies and doing all that shit. What, what's are you an outdoors guy? What, what's your thing? Me? Yeah, you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I ride bikes. Yeah. I ride, I got a couple Harleys that I like. Uh, okay, your motor seemed like that. Yeah, 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 I can see that. Yeah, and I play music. Ooh, what do you play? Do you I play? play guitar. Oh, wow. Uh, How long have uh, you been doing that I've been doing it for, since I was a kid. Oh, shit. Yeah. Who do you like to listen to? Uh, oh, God, where did, where did we, where do you begin with a song Genres, like that? Genres, eras. Yeah. Uh, who am I listening to a lot? Midnight Oil. Yeah. Lot nah. of Midnight Yeah. That was, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some John, John Farnsworth? I'm into, like, there's a few great, there's a couple amazing Aussie bands I'm listening to them, like yeah. King Gizzard and the Lizard Yes, Wizard. I just saw them wow. like so a few good. weeks ago yeah. at the Greek. Sounds Amazing. Yeah, were they good? So I great. miss that. Amazing. So those other kids that were backing them up too, Orb, ORB, those dudes, mm-hmm. they're, uh, they're, they're killers as well. And uh, uh, I love this dude, Ty Siegel. I'm seeing him tomorrow night at great. the Terragram. He's a big music guy. Yeah. Big music guy. You, so you, you good taste. Singer also? Or playing I sing a little you bit. Because yeah. uh, in the I backyard was... at 3 a.m., you know? <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Shit house. Yeah, let me play another one. <laughs> I get it. 
But I, don't, I always ask because you see people, you know, especially actors and actresses who, who play music, eventually they, that shows up in film. Yeah. Have you done that yet? Is, uh, no, guitar I, I haven't. And I would love to bring it in somewhere at some point for sure. There's yeah. been things like that I've kind of kicked around with developing or whatever that have that are kind of, um, you know, felt like that'll be the time. There, there will be a time when that happens. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that'll be. You know, I watched uh, I watched Rocket Man on the plane. Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. Coming over here, and I was Stay like, right. I was just like in awe. And I don't like honestly, I know it's not. A, you know, actors usually kind of rather like puff their feathers and talk about all the shit they definitely could. Do. I don't know if that's something I could do. I really yeah. don't like. I've I, I was Why never a musical theater guy. Okay. I don't know. I find I don't know the performance aspect. I wouldn't mind playing someone who sings and plays in a right. thing. But I don't know about uh, pulling in that and with dance numbers and shit. I just don't. That's probably something where I would be like, that's a fucking stretch. Is there like a a music legend that you would love to play in a biopic? Like an Aussie music legend? Anybody out there? Like a guitar guy kind of a situation? I don't know. It's funny. I mean, I'm getting a bit old now, but you know, I always... uh, I always wanted to do a Sublime biopic. Oh, oh shit. Wow. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah, like, Bradley, like, was such a huge influence to me musically, like, mm. coming up. But I think that there's was... There's been a script around that for a while. There's been shit talking around that for a minute, yeah. and there was a minute where I was kind of trying to kind of tick, you know, dig up a little kind of dirt and, and yeah. see what was going on, and I, it's hard to say where that thing is. I think it's right. one of those things that I'm not sure what? they know where to... You know. Go with it. Well, I guess that's my next question too, because like Dorina mentioned, because uh, you you've gone to this place in your career now, you got a lot more clout, and you can do more things. Have you thought about producing stuff on your own? Yeah, or, yeah, and yeah. There's a few things out there. There's a there's a couple scripts with some friends of mine, and and a couple little production shingles where there's some some interesting stuff. Kind of early days. Yeah. Um, One's, uh, yeah, which is, yeah, yeah, we'll see. You, okay. there's, you know, watch Some this stuff. space. Okay, yeah. yeah, we'll do. And the last thing I was going to ask you before you get out of here, too, yeah. you mentioned this mu- music. and another, Have you hooked up or talked to uh, uh, Chris Jericho yet? From ex wrestler. Uh, I know I, he is. Yeah, dude, he does it. He, his podcast, um, he just bullshits about music. Big, you know, because his, cause oh, his really? band, Fozzy, you guys would be. Oh, I didn't oh, know that. Hit it off. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, like they, he's, he came in here, we just bullshit about, we just talked about music for like, for a while. He's just, that's what he does. He brings in, because he doesn't like to talk about wrestling and just talk yeah, to people yeah, about yeah, stuff yeah, sure. that they do. It's like, I know, you know, I, obviously, you've only had you in here for like 20 minutes, 25 minutes this time, but like ne- next yeah, time you come next in, time. you come in and talk about whatever movie you're talking about, then we just shoot the shit about everything else, because I want to hear more about your music. Sure. I want to hear more about stuff like that. To wow. me, that's, yeah. I'm sure that's refreshing sometimes. Talk about, too. Yeah. You can talk nice. about King Gizzard for like an hour. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a sports John guy Farnsworth? too? Yeah, yeah, but you know what? I'm still watching. I watched the rugby league back home, bro. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. I'm not a good. I'm not good with the like. I don't like I reject American sport. I just yeah. haven't. Uh, I get it, kind of into the Dodgers stuff, okay. but like this season, I haven't seen no. a thing. Well, Are they going to make the World Series? Is that going to happen? They won the NL West already. Yeah, they're in the playoffs. So, they're in the playoffs. Oh fuck! So yeah. haven't started it's, yet. It's a it's good okay. possibility. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah hoping for, like I'm hoping for Dodgers Yankees. That's mm-hmm. what I'm hoping for. That's a possibility this year, right? Possibility. Yeah, my buddy told me early on, he was like, it could happen. It could happen. This could be it's a, it depends. Uh, the, uh, How good would that be? You know, mm-hmm. The Astros mm-hmm. are playing cool. pretty good right now, though, so we'll, we'll see. Um, but last thing, before, again, before you, before you get out of here, do you you MMA guy? You, like, I am a that? big MMA guy. Okay, so that yeah, I watch it. almost all the UFC. That's what I'm saying. I yeah. could see you playing a fighter. Yeah. I mean, is that something that probably could come along? Want to do a fader biopic? That'd be fun. It yeah. could be good. Yeah. I uh, see you're playing coy here right now. Hmm. I see what you're doing. <laughs> All right. Jai Courtney, ladies and gentlemen. And go check out the movie, once again, Semper Fi, October 4th this yeah. year, on demand in theater. Semper Fi, Jai Courtney, come back. Hang Thanks, on. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Thanks we'll so see you much. next time. Jeez.